Hey, good uh, good afternoon, actually, to you, Living Soil Nerds. Happy Wednesday. Uh, we got another one for the books. Uh, lucky enough to have uh, several people on board today. Uh, as always, we got uh, Mr. Ken behind the scenes working the IT stuff. So appreciate you, sir, making this look good every each and every week. Uh, our guest, obviously, today is Duke Diamond. Um, I don't think our audience knows or, or is, isn't aware of the respect that I have for this gentleman. Um, he's always been telling the truth. Uh, I think I've shared this many times. You know, he was the first one to kind of show me that, hey, man, even if you do make it in this game, you might not even enjoy it. Uh, that turned out to be true. Uh, so there's a lot of things that uh, I think uh, Duke's given the industry a lot of wisdom. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have a, an event with him where he kind of just broke down a lot of stuff. And, and I think a lot of people were able to go down rabbit holes with that. I also got the homie uh, Ryan in the building today. Uh, we're going to be smoking on some homestead stuff. So shout out to TJ. Uh, your stuff is fantastic, brother. We've been uh, hitting it here for uh, probably a good uh, 10 minutes or so. That's why I'm probably struggling for words because this shit's really kicking in. Uh, but this shit smells fantastic, TJ. Uh you know, the homie came with the, uh, this, we used to always call these the baller jars, Duke. I don't know. I don't know if these are considered baller oh, yeah. jars anymore, but back in the day they were, these were like, you know, the sought after thing. So, uh, Mr. Ryan, appreciate you coming through. Uh, and then we're going to kind of just chop it up with Duke. You know, there's a lot of things that you've been working on, sir, since, uh, you know, they let you come, come back out and play with the, play with the community. So I kind of wanted to let you, um, you know, talk about some things. Uh, I'm going to give the, the mic to, to Marco because I know that the community just kind of respects you, Duke, uh, you know, in a variety of ways, man. And uh, I'll always be a cheerleader for that, buddy, because you always uh, are who you say you are, man. I've never seen anything different. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Definitely. I'm consistent. At least I'm consistent. <laughs> yes, sir. Consistent. I've heard that plenty of times. Yeah, good to see you again, Duke. Um, hey, you pretty much, good. man, just want to go through and kind of Talk about what you've been up to since the last time we talked. You know, you were a little bit fresh out back then, you know, and uh, yeah. now things have changed. I see, you know, kind of getting your roots back planted and getting things spread out and, you know, getting your hands into some more shit, man. So I'm very, uh, very glad to see that. And we all knew that was just going to happen naturally, you know, as it should. A um, <laughs> couple of things people are going to want to know, like about drops and you coming back to VA or what you got going on. So, yeah, I mean, I'll just give it over to you. and. Um, kind of you know let the folks know what you want them to know hell yeah man well you know how it is let's say duke diamond does what duke diamond does because duke diamonds duke diamond and what's understood that need to be explained so we'll go into gardening so doing that's always uh always good times um new stuff you know uh working on all that, you know, but it, things take time, you know, um, any, anything worth doing right, you know, it, it's, it's, it's going to take some time. So, um, I had something that I've been working out with my buddy Drew and, um, that finally, finally is coming to fruition. So, but it's, it's just like a real, real limited, uh, like a real limited thing. Um, coming up in like a week so it ain't nothing ain't nothing big like talking about um do a little something else in november but it'll be after new year's that's that's when everything will really hit it um shirts hoodies things like that that's getting ready to be happening here in about mm, about 10 days so that's cool um running through the the build of soil got uh jeremy He's a man. He 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 made my my soul blend up for me, so I could save my back and not have to, you know, <laughs> do it the old-fashioned way. So I'm running uh running through that, making sure everything's all cool. Um, document the runs and everything, and um, you know, as long as everything's all good, he'll be able to offer that to people, which that's that's going to be super cool. Um, yeah, and other than that, you know. It, you know, do the little Discord thing on uh, Friday nights. You know, I'm always checking the messages, but, you know, we do a little, little seed giveaway thing on Friday nights. And anytime I got a buddy that wants to kind of kick it and shoot the shit, you know, I got the little thing here, you know, I can record it, put it on, put it on YouTube. Last one I did was with my, with my buddy, the 
mycology collector. Um, yeah, he's good. He's good people. It's all about uh, all about shrooms and shit. So you know, switch up, switch up gears a little bit. Um, other than that, you know, it's just uh, kind of the you know same old, same old. Just stay busy all the time, working, keep it moving and whatnot. And yeah, you know, I, I keep thinking about the last time we talked. Uh, uh, <laughs> We had that uh, that interview, and you were talking about people like need to get smacked up, and I was like, ah, you know, you know, I don't know. Like I, I think I think about that like pretty pretty constantly, man. About like what was Marco saying, man? And then I was like, you know what, man? Next time I see him, I'll be like, yeah, you're right, man. Some of these jokers need to get smacked the fuck up, straight up. <laughs> took a while, you know. It took a while to think on that. Now I got I got an answer for sure. That's what's up, man. Well, that's kind of the problem with this industry is that we treat it more like how comedians do, where like, you know, comedians are stealing jokes. It seemed like nobody was really telling the truth till Rogan came out and called out Mencia. Uh, the behind the scenes curtain aspects of the cannabis industry is that there's a lot of people that uh, steal each other's work or pretend to do certain things and, and just, you know, polish it a little bit and call it something else. Uh, when a lot of us behind the scenes know exactly what they're doing. Um, and, you know, kudos to you, dude, because, you know, shit happens to you, buddy. But I would say probably mm, the majority have no idea about it, man, because you just keep it moving. Uh, you always educate. And uh, I think that's that's really what people are after, dude, is that you, uh, you know, I always <laughs> say you, you really carry the torch for more of like the, the living soil crowd as well as the character that should be, you know, that that torch as well. Um, so I kind of wanted to get into um, into those seeds. And if, if you feel like you want to uh you know express anything today man the platform's here otherwise you know i'll just kind of let you guide uh that part of the conversation uh, and then of course i got a bunch of questions we'll get into some shit oh well sure um so the two things that are coming up one's called the head gain so a little background on on the two things they both uh they both share the same mail um <clears throat> before i had gone away like uh well actually it was like the year prior um, I had some boys back back east that, that needed some shit for outdoor, so I was taking an eagle mail and just hitting hitting a few other few other things. And one of the things was uh, the free bird. They really they were really digging that, which was excuse me, which was a headband and screaming eagle. So it was like a double dose of screaming eagle on it. Put them up with that and a few other things. They they really they were really digging it back home. So um, I give my buddy Drew a jar of uh, <laughs> some of the bud, and I was like, "Yeah, some like some of the bud in there, like the lowers, you know, seeded, but the colas are good to go. You can blaze it." And I literally had uh, hooked him up with that in the parking lot when I was like getting ready to head out because you know the man was after me and shit. So um, I passed him mm -hmm. off those and grow them out, and he was like, "My God, dude, that was fucking awesome shit." So he grows out the, the seed in it and everything. He's like, man, this shit is the truth. You know, um, want to wanna do something with it. So I was like, yeah, do, do your thing, man. So <clears throat> he played around with it a little bit. One of the things was uh, Virginia Beach Afghani. Really like it's that piney, piney, um, little sour apple buried in, in that pine. Like it, it's just killer shit, real narcotic weed. Um, he had hit that, and he also hit the Kim D. So mm -hmm. those were the two offerings. Now on the um, on the head gain, like they stack up. It's like Virginia Beach Afghani, but like it stacks up like even harder, and some more resin to it and everything. Still got that same same type of you know put you back type punch. Uh, the Kim D hybrid, they call that the delusion. That, that's the same way, but definitely leans more like the the Kim, Kim tennis ball, rubber, and um, just um, that that nasty kind of funk on the on the smell, and uh, you know allegedly uh, you know it, it coats the mouth when you smoke it and has a good solid put you back effect too. Hmm. Hey, dude. So since you mentioned that Virginia Beach Ganny. You know, that's been a classic around these parts. You know what I mean? I, when I was in college, I had a roommate from there. 
what do you know like what are the kind of the origins of that strain man because that's you know that's like a serious strain and it's also one that you know probably a lot of folks try to copy you know what i mean and relabel yeah. and try to you know kind of create yeah um so like you know you, you always hear all types of uh you know weird shit tall tales like i used to tell people the weirdest one i heard was about a sailor a sailor and a midget um I don't know. It, it, like, I did hear the one about the sailor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> something about, yeah, a something about a sailor and a midget. Something. <laughs> but, um, so my boy, uh, my boy Rob, the one that he passed away a little while back, he, uh, he knew Hurley and all them cats at the beach and, um, you know, was part of that, part of that crew. And they said, he, you know, he always told me the same thing is that <clears throat> a cat brought it out from uh, Kentucky. And then I'd also heard it from like two other people outside that crew. So to, to my knowledge, yeah, dudes from Kentucky brought it out during the eighties and uh, been, been chilling there ever since. Cause it was great <clears throat> back in the day, like, you know, under just HPS lights, you know, you'd be able to hit that three of light shit um, and just some ebb and flow trays. Like it, it was, you know, the yield on it, the smell on it, the potency um it just it just hit you know and, and it just checked every box so it was just like a go-to for everybody back home especially like not just for the head but you know make a little money too exactly mm -hmm. all right well that's cool probably the craziest story i heard was something along the lines of a sailor or because you know the the navy base is there so it's always something to yeah, do with that. so a sailor brought a seed back from over afghanistan or some crazy shit. so i'm glad you explained that a little better that's that's kind of cool that it's from actually you know kentucky that's kind of dope so yeah yeah that was uh that was the consensus there because like nobody really really knows like talking about but um, you know, when you, when you hear the same shit three times from different, you know, people that are separated, then, you know, it, that kind of makes more sense than a sailor sailing a ship in Afghanistan in the eighties, uh, <laughs> smuggling seeds back in a midget or something, you know, in a I mean? car hole. bro, like, can you imagine like some dude comes out? That like, was the story for real. Are y'all just going? You're going crazy, crazy stories about that. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're really. They're right, hiding man. seeds in their buttholes. That was probably a little bit much, but oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I might be adding. <laughs> like, that, damn, I might have been adding a little, a little bit, bit more on that one, but uh, it was crazy shit like that. Man. Yeah, it really was, man. Yeah, you hear all types of crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, where do you think, like, dude, back in the day? I mean, it did seem like a lot of the genetics we're coming or at least from the east coast uh we're coming from florida kentucky i remember some stuff were coming in the carolinas if you if you knew certain people and um you know it, it always kind of baffled me where that stuff was coming from and it did seem like yeah then the the good stuff would then get to new york and miami um and then of course everybody's getting paid if they were able to get it there oh yeah yeah every every region had it had its own thing you know that's for damn sure um <clears throat> and being like you got Interstate 95 right there, you know, that it's just, you know, Virginia is like, you know, it's like smack dead in, in the middle, you know what I mean? So, you know, everything was kind of coming up and through it. And then from the beach, all we the got way that on our logo. You know, I 95. Yeah, yeah, straight up, man. Yeah, yeah. I 95, Bo. Yeah, that's a, quite the trail. <laughs> the core, but yeah, though. I mean, you got. Yeah, and then you got 64 intersects with it right in Richmond, too. It goes all the way to the beach, it goes all the way through, like, Kentucky and all that. So, yeah, you, you would end up seeing all types of shit, man, all types of shit. Mm -hmm. Where do yeah. you think the genetics really were coming? From? Because a lot of it, or at least for us, was like, we mentioned it before, the Crippy was the one that, like, the Holy Grail for many, many years. Supposedly that came out of somewhere in Florida. Uh, and then there were a bunch of other genetics that were, like, like here today gone tomorrow kind of thing that people wish they would have had do you think that was just somebody with talent that was pumping that stuff out or do you do you think that was you know there were really multiple people in florida pumping out those kind of genetics back then um i think anytime you got like really passionate people about their growing and everything and want the best you know they were seeking their their shit out um you know seed bank of holland 
right, with Neville. Um, Super Sativa Seed Club was, was, was doing their thing. Later on, since he comes around, um, that was that was real huge in the in the 90s, um, and even before that, like you had what Sacred Seeds and Brotherhood of Eternal Love. Like <clears throat> you had people that were like really really about their about their shit, and you know you also had like import weed. You know people get seed out of, and you just never can tell. You know they're playing around with something that they were getting. Um, you know, there, there's that that as well. I think a lot of it was just people really, just really going for it, you know, and and, and saying like, yeah, you know, I got a seed catalog, and let me uh, let me just go ahead and take the risk and see about getting these seeds, and then they uh, they go and do that. They, you know, either just growing it out in the pure, or you know, they might be messing around and you know making their own their own little hybrids of it and shit. So I think I think that was probably a good majority of it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like a lot of it was, you know, people get ordering some things overseas, mm-hmm. and then once they got their hands on them, then people were starting to mm-hmm. work them a little bit here and and that kind of thing. Yeah, man. It's, especially back then, it wasn't like um, you know everybody had access to the genetics. So if somebody had some weird ass blueberry something or whatever, like that, really stood out. Uh, usually everybody knew who that person was or knew a person that knew a person. So it seemed like if you weren't connected in that pipeline, you weren't going to get those genetics. Uh, Ryan said that he had something he could throw in on there about uh, the genetics in Florida. So I wanted to let him. Um, Nice. On the Crippy, just the the Cubans had a lot to do with that in Miami. Um, Growing up in Miami, I saw that a lot. And um, there's honestly, I feel like a lot of strains came from Miami um like a lot of hazes uh, people were crazy about that too back then um and then a lot of people know about the the mango haze or miami mango and all that um but yeah i was just the creepy i whenever i think of creepy i think of cubans i, I think of cubans and just trap houses like <laughs> pushing it like <laughs> you know that's a great point man because if you think about it for a strain to be known like on the whole east coast or in the whole region you know everybody knows this blueberry everybody knows this it had to be a huge grow you feel me it couldn't have just been one grow it had to be multiple mm-hmm. outfits growing that same strain and you know nobody else is more organized than you know crime you know what i'm saying so that that makes it that makes a good point and people always went out of their way to say creepy with a k so i don't know if there was ever like some other bullshit genetics out there or something but they always went out of their way to, to let me know that get this shit with the k <laughs> possibly i guess yeah <laughs> i'm not see see walking uh you got something else uh, so when we were uh, kind of growing up, it did seem like the New York Sour Diesel, that kind of stuff w- was was fire as well. Um, but, it, you know, it was almost like these like fantasy strains would, shit that people really wanted would just appear every now and then. And then it seemed like people would unload it. Maybe it would take a week, maybe it would take a, a month. Uh, and then you wouldn't see it for a long time again, which I would imagine is because they got to do that whole flip again. Uh, but when I was younger, I, I didn't realize, you know, that how long it actually really took to to grow, especially at the, you know, doing outdoors and that kind of thing. So when when you're kind of moving forward with this back in the day, that's kind of why I wanted to start more with this show, Duke, is kind of picking your brain back then, because you had an eye for stuff that really smelled to high heaven, you know. And, uh, you know, I've spent many nights chopping up with uh, Sticky kind of talking about that on it just seemed like you had. Uh, you know, you had something that, that other breeders didn't and you, you were able to find that. And um, I would love to kind of peer more into how you were able to achieve it. Well, <clears throat> the, to me, the smell, I, cause you know, when I'm looking to make something, I'm looking to check as many of those boxes as possible, but primarily my smell needs to be there and my potency needs to be there. And I feel like they're kind of, you know, tied in, you know, they're, they kind of, you know, one in the same, um, not saying there's like nothing potent that doesn't smell, you know, vice versa, but, um, you know, those are the two, two main things, you know, I need smell and effect, you know, like structure and everything else. 
you know, that's that's right there with it. But you know, flowering time, eh, I'm not I'm not too concerned about, you know, um, long as it's respectable, you know. Um, but those those are the primary things. And then when you're growing out your female populations, like making sure that you're on point there. But when you when you're going into making that that male selection. Um, like, I mean, it's great, you know, if you got like a stinky male plant and veg, like uh, that's cool and all, <clears throat> but, um, you know, when breeding for smell, like it was very important to, you know, take a couple of clones and, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the male naturally, how he wants to flower out, you know, um, structurally and all that, you know, floral, floral, uh, formations, um, how fast till I get a bud set, yada yada. But I also like to to reverse uh, a male clone. Like I'm not growing him up like super huge or anything, and just feeding him like I would, you know, any other plant in bloom. And then just kind of kind of get an idea uh, at the end of that cycle um, what I'm what I'm looking at as far as um, as far as smell that he's looking to to pass on. Now is he gonna pass that on? Uh, you know, if it, you know, if the fuck is true breeding for it, yeah, sure. But you know, it's to me, it's it's better than just taking a wild wild stab in the dark. And typically, when I'm doing my male selections, um, there's a lot of them that would definitely cut the mustard. But then that's kind of like the final distinguishing factor of like, well, you know, this 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 guy was uh, was a little more or uh, a little more smelly and a little more what, what I was looking to do. So, you know, that, that was kind of, kind of my process in, in doing that. And, um, yeah, so he like said the female selection, of course, but then, you know, really, really getting a little, little heavier into the male side of it. And so, I mean, from what I'm hearing, I mean, obviously male and female matter in any kind of genetic aspect, but what I've learned from you and in, in growing your genetics and like reading some of the, the stuff that you give to the community, um, you know, you're the only person I've seen where you say like, hey, if you if you really push this girl, she's going to she's going to uh, man her out on you. Or, uh, you know, you just mentioned like you're not pushing the males. And that that's almost sounds um, like blasphemy. Like you were, when you were talking like three alight and stuff like there are a lot of people here in Denver that just thought, hey, man, if you're not hitting three alight, like you're not even a farmer. I mean. I, I guess the, the aspects of, you know, taste and smell, the things that you just talked about your breeding for, that wasn't, that wasn't the focal point, but now the community here in Denver realizes that that fad is gone. Like if you're not growing, you know, it's not just about the, the, the weight percentage and even the way yeah. that was calculated is silly too. <laughs> for sure. For sure, man. Um, you definitely want to have um, the full package. And I mean, like, you know, like, <laughs> what they were doing in like a recreational legal market like that shit ain't that ain't new man you know like we've been selling weight for a long fucking time like way before it was legal and you know if i got pounds of you know the stinkiest shit you ever ever smelled it tastes great and everything and then i got you know packs of some like some big bud you know big bud skunk or some shit like that just ain't quite there, but like it yields. I mean, what what the fuck are you gonna go buy? You know, whether you're smoking it and flipping it or just you know, that's mm. just how it is. You know. So what about herms, um, Duke? Because I was just um, I popped a pack of seeds. A guy sent me a free pack, and he he didn't he he basically said they're stabilized fem. You know, they're feminized or stable, right? So grow them out. Kim D. Cross. I'm not gonna call the guy out. He's a small guy, and I like to su support, you know, all all kinds of people. So I, I, you know, he sent me free packs. Ain't no big deal. But it took took my time because, like, uh, day twenty four ish, I started getting, um, you know, pollen sacks, man, and flower. Right. You know what I mean? And if, and out of ten seeds, uh, seven of them I grew out, and out of that seven, pretty much every one, man, it was like consistent. I got a lot of other um, things going on in the same environment, so it didn't get they didn't get stressed that way. 
But I'm wondering if, if that's like a case of people getting too rambunctious or too ahead of themselves trying to like cross things and put things out there. Or is there something to it like Kim D crosses can do that until you kind of that kind of stuff that matters? Yeah. Um, with Kim D stuff and like there's a lot of things, um, they'll produce like those like very late manners, not all the time, but you might see one or two poke out the bud when you're, you know, in your last week, last couple days or something, you know, mm -hmm. um, there is, there is that, but like what you're talking, like <clears throat> when I see anything do that, especially in the, in the twenties, um, that's telling me either like. Like, yeah, ju just genetically, it's all confused and mixed up or there's some type of uh, there's some type of stress that, that's been introduced. And um, like I said, you're growing that same thing amongst another population of what I'm assuming, knowing you, it's like it's a pretty good variety of, of different things. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, when when, you know, especially when it's more than one seed and, and you know, all of them are kind of freaking out um and like i said everything else in the room it's like a variety of things is not freaking out it's telling me that well you know the feeds are on point right um mm -hmm. there's there's no light leaks and things of that nature and there's just right. nothing that's really you know trying to uh you know get things uh freaking out so that would kind of you know lead me more to like just genetically it's a little might be a little little mixed up um but you know that's the other thing is like yeah it might have been it might have been free you know but uh man like even when i would give free shit out like i'd already at least grown a little bit of it you know what i mean yeah um just because like you know i don't i ain't trying to waste somebody's time you know right. and, and you know their space and potentially like fuck them like that so um yeah you know some some of the some of the folks yeah they need to uh they need to slow it down a little bit and you know yeah just, i can dig when that I'm, when i'm through yeah. so so with that said though you know i'm gonna assume you know this gentleman took it to a certain point okay he either worked it or maybe just threw a little pollen or whatever and to his credit, the plants looked amazing. Even that first, you know, 20 days, 24 days in flower, it looked really good. Stem rubs, loud, stanky. I was really looking forward to it. I mean, with that said, like, is there any way that you'd take some seeds like that and kind of maybe continue to work them? And if so, what would be some ways? Should I just keep interworking within the remaining seeds I have, you think? Or what you, what you think? Well, since they're thumbs, um, you won't have to worry about like, you know, calling and shit. So like you could, well, calling males, um, you can at least, you know, predict how many you want to grow each run. And if it's something that's like really that appealing about it that you like, you really, really want, I mean, it could be, you know, just worth, you know, throwing a few in, uh, do them small, maybe in, um, you know, a little smaller and more of them and just keep calling them out and calling them out and then, you know, find your, uh, find your clone, you know, um, but you know, it just, and don't really use that for breeding stock. I would imagine it'd be more find that good clone you wanted and kind of lock in right there. Yeah, exactly. Unless you're like, a one of those people, uh, masochists, <laughs> right. people like getting hurt or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you have pain. Yeah, unless you're into that, you know. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, I'd probably call it call it good right there. There you go. Hey, Duke, do you mind explaining, because a lot of the audience is new to cannabis yeah. just in general, uh, especially from farming. Can you kind of explain why regular seeds are coveted to some and why feminiz feminized seeds are coveted to some so that, you know, the average person can hear it from, uh, from you know, a breeder's point of view? Yeah, for sure. Um so naturally the benefit of a you know a fem seed versus a regular is um and i'm i'm just assuming you know a lot of the newer people it's like all right shit's legal now i'm allowed you know four plants six plants whatever um you want to make the most of your uh <clears throat> your plant count so that that definitely helps with that um um things when when 
bred in a in a feminized route and when things are bred from a male perspective or a male route um so if i take plant a female plant b male cross them right I have an F1 hybrid, there's going to be uh, a, a variance, right? Like a, um, like a spread of what you're going to see in, in its, you know, expression there. Um, you're going to see some lean heavily toward mom. You're going to see a majority sharing, you know, a little traits from each one. And then you're going to have some that are going to lean heavily uh, toward, like, the, the dad side from what... Um, he was passing on on his X chromosome from his mother and so on and so forth. Um, if you take those seeds and you take a male and a female from, from that and you cross them together, that's what you would call your F2 generation. So your F2 generation, um, you're going to get a way, way more uh, diverse population, right? So within that diverse population, like you can find some really, really stellar, stellar stuff. Now on the feminized part of it, um, you can take a plant, female plant that's been reversed, right? And the pollen from that to another plant and, and make like a, uh, like a feminized hybrid. Now the big, big thing about the feminized thing is you might see um, S1, like of um, some real popular clone that you heard of and everything. So just so let it be known, like a lot of people assume like, oh, well, that that famous clone has been reversed onto itself and made these feminized seeds. I'm going to find, you know, uh, a, an assortment of or kind of assortment, but they're thinking they're going to get cloned from seed that way uh, right off the bat and more or less what's happened is that, that self generation you you've essentially made the f2 generation you're actually going to get um, quite a spread um, if they do it again and make an s2 you'll see things um, begin to begin to tighten up um, without because I've, I've made films before um, and I've done a lot of regs too. Um, being as like when we're when we're only dealing with X chromosomes and you know just sharing basically the mitochondrial DNA, and we're leaving out maybe certain Y link traits and stuff like that. Not everything breeds out so well doing it doing it that route. Um, the the same stuff applies, right? Like you know you're still you know making your selections and you're growing out a population and seeing seeing where you're at um, some things might have the look and everything else but they don't have the punch um, but it, it that can happen with the with the with the regulars too right so um, no matter which way you're going just do your homework and um, you know see that the people are are, are, are testing you know what what they're putting out there you really really got to look at that um you know that, that that's the biggest biggest advice that i could that i can give you um me personally like i can see where like if they are feminized or testing shit like you can take it to the bank like you got four spots open you can drop four seeds and you know be in there um me like I, I I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with you know you, you you call out some males and you keep some clones and then you just run run your favorite clones anyway because you're gonna you're probably gonna do that with your film film seed anyway you're gonna find a winner you're gonna keep clones of that and you're gonna run that uh, repeatedly so you know it's just kind of kind of up to you because like it's always been like a big big debate which is regular uh, which is better regs or films. Um, are these more potent, better the, this way, that way? Honestly, um, they're both tools in the toolbox of, of breeding, you know. So you can you can uh, you can breed some straight trash uh, either way, and you can you can you can make some straight gold either way, and sometimes maybe even both. So you can take take that for for what it's worth, I guess. 
So, so do do you think it would be better than to start um, um, stabilizing a regular line? Let's go regular, stabilize that, and then do some fem to kind of strengthen it later. Or do you think you know what? What do you think on that? Um, it it kind of kind of depends on what you're what you're working with. If you if you're dealing with uh, true breeding uh, true breeding varieties for the for the traits that you're looking for versus say um, not not true breeding uh, traits that you're looking at um, and the amount of work that it's going to take to to get there. Um, you can you can do that through feminization. Um, you can do it through regs. You might find one works better than the other, or it might get you there. Might get you there quicker. Um, so there, there's time. that. Mm-hmm. 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 And you know, and if you were to do it, um, you know, both ways, you might see, you know, one expression's great on, you know, the feminized route, or it might be lacking in another thing, and on the other route that uh, <clears throat> that you know it it was it had what it was lacking. And you might you might combine those together uh, at the end, and you, you might actually end up with the full package. So hmm. you know, just yeah, you just kind of got to go for it, and then uh, look at your progeny and see see what's actually going on, and then kind of make your make your decision from there. Because like yeah, like there's all this you know technology, and like people go on and on about it. Like oh yeah, you know you could these markers and this and that it's like hey man unless you got you know a million dollar lab uh a dna rna synthesizer and you know mass spectrology and all the shit like you're you're going to uh you're gonna have to to do it this way which is uh the old-fashioned way using your using your senses and uh you know looking at what's going on and predictability and things of that nature and you got to go the long route and you're just gonna have to grow them out, and you know, give the old pudding uh, pudding test. You Put know, that so work in. It. Yeah, that's it, man. Oh that's man, it. there's no shortcuts. <laughs> oh man. Oh, dude, I don't want to grow <laughs> then. <laughs> hey, what uh, you know, what are your thoughts on the autos and kind of how things are improving, but at the same time, it's still like you know, from your standpoint, like how are you gonna really work with those lines if everything once it's flowered out is gone forever? Right. Yeah, there, there is that. Um, you know, you're not, uh, not looking to keep clones. You might just be looking to, uh, run through them. Um, they're, they're not, they're not my thing, but, you know, maybe I could, I could see the, uh, the potential for it if, you know, you were in some type of, uh, uh, like a legal market and you were able to have like an auto film from seed that was still, you know, super banging and able to select the seed out a whole field and rock and roll it for maybe like hash production, you know, like for the bait cart market or something like that, you know, it, it might be, uh, might be pretty, pretty good, pretty profitable. Um, so yeah, yeah, I could see it that route, but like, you know, me, I'm, I'm just going to do my normal, normal thing and keep clones and do so all straight that. Straight to the freezer. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that soccer well, mom weed. Like, I guess it doesn't yeah. really matter in, unless <laughs> until it really gets to the pen, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all, it's it really comes down to the mylar bag, you know, and the and the artwork on it and everything, you know. Uh, that's that's what's really important, you know. Facts, absolutely. Right. Hell yeah. <laughs> so you again, you were one of the first ones that kind of start to teach people that uh, you know read the labels. You know, I don't. I think a lot of us. I don't know, just fell into the trap. Hey, they gave me this cool little manual every week. I follow this and my weeds. Okay. You know, you're the one that was in my book, at least the first one that was like, ah, that shit's probably yucca extract and cranberry juice. So do you mind kind of briefly kind of, I know that was a nice rant that night, but do you mind kind of going on a brief rant about um, what's in a lot of that stuff? And I know there's other products out there that have improved, but especially back in the day, what was really in that stuff? Yeah, um, you know, there was a lot of, like, popular things that were, you know, it's like Epsom salt and um, maybe, like, lemon and lime juice, um, basically oyster shell and some dolomite lime and molasses, <laughs> yeah, mixed together, um, 
it, it's a, a lot of these things, um, <clears throat> they, they, they can be made, <clears throat> made at home. Um, especially, you know, for the, for the organic crowd out there. Um, I'm not, I'm, when I have some more time, like I'm looking to like learn, I guess more about K and F and um, J Dam, I think it's something thing, but definitely looking, you know, to learn more about that because it, it's just really, it's really cool that like people are, you know, they're they're making their own stuff and like not just looking at it like you know this is that you know and I'm just doing it, but like what what's within that like you know, not just like nutrient, but like those naturally occurring uh, PGRs, you know, that come within, you know, or, organic. It's like, um, you know, the um, alfalfa and the trucant and all and all that shit. So, um, and, that, and that's what it all boils down to is a lot of like the fancy products. Um, it might just be um, basically a little cow mag made from... Um, um, Dolomite lime, maybe some oyster shell broken down with it, some molasses in there. They add a little kelp extract to it, um, and then you know they call it call it good. Cool ass sticker. Yeah. You forgot that part. Right. Yeah, you yeah. gotta have the cool sticker, um, and then later you will get into your mylar bags with cool cool logo. Um, yeah. So basically, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of things you you can make yourself. Um, but on like the same token, like it does take time. It does take space. Um, you know, some people are working, you know, you know, 60 hour weeks and shit and we got the family and all they ain't, they ain't got time for all that or maybe the space. But if you do have time in the space and it's like, you know, big hobby and everything and you want to save some cheddar, um, yeah, you can, you can really look at it and you can, you can make all your own stuff. Um, like I've been giving out soul recipes and regimens and shit like that for years. Um, maybe 2% of those people actually do it. Uh, everybody else is like, yeah, that's, that's a lot of, it's a lot of work, <laughs> you know, so, you know, but it, it's out there, you know, information and knowledge and all that. So if you, if you're looking to do it, like, yeah, definitely, definitely should. And then, like, you know, there's the guys with the salts, you know, they spend shit ton of money, man. And a lot of these companies are just still going off the old, same old recipes like you used to use with the old, uh, the old Peters, you know, the fucking Jacks and all that shit from way back. And, or people that used to source their own salts and everything, you know, it's the same shit. But instead of growing for $200 a year, you know, the guys are dumping 10000 Fifteen thousand a year on news. <laughs> Making yeah, in a people weird work. way, that was a that was like a badge of honor. You know? Oh yeah. Like yeah. you were oh man, I'm using uh house and garden nutrients. I'm spending thousands on the shooting power. It's like, well, what's in that? Oh, I never looked. <laughs> never thought about it either, yeah. did they? <laughs> yeah, man. Like you no, the go money on, was so um, good. So the people yeah, that really understood back then, they could handle it. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, you yeah, that and the, the other problem was like back in the day, like you you couldn't or you shouldn't be going to a to a hydro store. You know what I mean? You get him the fuck up. So you better be kind of <laughs> hip to you know making your own shit anyway. So like I said, I'd rather money be in my pocket than you know somebody else's. You know, more power to him. Like don't get me wrong, but you know exactly. Like, you know, if I can change my own oil and all that shit, I'm gonna change my own oil. You know, I mean, I ain't going to the Jiffy Lube, yeah. you know. But, you know. Until until changing the oil costs me money, meaning I can't be somewhere else making more money. You know, I'll change my own. <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. I do everything I can, you know, and and like certain things, like I feel like I can refine it maybe a little bit, a little bit better for my own needs and everything. So, you know, <laughs> I guess weekend I'm gonna be making some jungle juice, man. I'm going. Going fruit shopping to the to the hippie grocery store and get all them good uh, organic fruits and everything and uh, get the old Jack Lane uh, food processor out and start juicing, you know. Get that start bucket. getting to work. That's that cat that would be man. like water skiing when he was eighty. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's it, dude. Crispy tan too. 
His old ass be flexing on you too, man. He'd be like pumping that fucking shit up and going out like, yeah, you know. <laughs> That's like, right. Fired up, fired up for that juice, man. <laughs> That's what's up. Show the people you don't have to go to the stores. I'm I'm going to a grocery store this Saturday doing a little education thing, but um, I told the owner, unfortunately, I will be uh trying to show them how to stay out of here. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's kind of the key. There's always there's some stuff you can go in there and buy. That you always need a little something. Sure. Uh, not the yeah, nutrients, not yeah. the inputs. Yeah, man. Uh, like I said, like the the key to me always was once I had a good base built, once my soil was where I wanted to be, and I got it in pots. You know, microbes. Like yeah, you know. But that's the thing is like people are you know getting into you know farming their own uh, microbes and all now too but you know getting microbes that was one thing but everything else like you know it you know i always had the back one i left over from mixing the soil up and then beyond that like set some epsom salt some molasses you know fruit juice and fruit blended up you know um not not really a not really much much other than that you know keeping it natural hell yeah yeah keeping it simple We're keeping, keeping it, it cheap natural. too yeah. Keeping it real cheap, dude. Yeah, I guess it's oh, silly okay. to be uh, spending a ton of money now um, doing this, especially yeah. with all that the free education that's out there. I mean, there's just so many different ways to make better nutrients that you can find. Uh, Marco and I talk about this each and every week. Like when you're getting more of like now you're getting into like the composting worms and the you know that whole like soil food web rove beetle style where you're being active. Yeah in uh, building up your mother nature as your living soil system is starting to come alive and thriving. I think that's how a proactive farmer is able to stay ahead on a lot of this stuff is they just start, you know, if, if it's a marathon race and that's obviously the way you're looking at it, then we also need to start our aspects to combat, um, you know, bad pest pressures or, or com you know, combat combative pest pressures by using our own combative measures by uh, you know going out of our way to understand predatory mites and stuff so mm -hmm. yeah. was there things that you felt like were mm -hmm. worthwhile i mean I, you know marco and i talked to the experts too can they say to use these things and some of the predatory mites are do seem like they actually work and then some of the like super expensive finicky ones the humidity has to be dialed in I'm still on the fence if those are actually worth it for anything more than maybe just a tent grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my thing, because <clears throat> we're looking at it um, nowadays, you know, it could be, you know, we're just doing our doing our thing at home. You know, we got the little spare room or, you know, we got the tent or a couple tents. And then, you know, then, then there's making money, right? Uh, we got a hundred lighter going on, you know, bigger, a little smaller, whatever, right? Um, certain things we have in control in our home, right? Whereas we're going to lose some of those controls if we're doing more of, um, we just call it a commercial, commercial scale, right? So things that would be like in my control is, well, I can, I don't have people over right um i'm not i'm not taking in uh you know random random clones shit like that um my environment's basically sealed off to just me and i can control just me you know if i'm out back you know working in the field and shit and chopping weeds or, or doing whatever man you know my ass stripping them clothes off you know i'm gonna get in the water scrub it up you know put some clean clothes on before i go back and i do my thing um not having people over, you know, because, you know, you just pick up some random growers off the street, like, hey, you want to see my tech grow? Shit, man, they might have some powdery mildew spores up in the dreadlocks or something, man. You just, you just never know, <laughs> right? So yeah. they might, they might have crabs and spider mites, for real. So you just, you just don't know. Um, also, keeping the pets out, out of the room, because like one, like there's a hair thing, but two, like. You know, dog goes running through them weeds, and you let him on up in your shit. You know, he might he might bring you bring you some uh, spider mites or something. Taking in the clones from random places, from stores, and you know, you buy these clones wherever. Um, you know, it, it, that's that's tricky business too. So, um, 
versus say like you know something like large scale you're going to lose a lot of that control you got employees you don't know what they're doing and you know, they might they might have their tent in their house and they they, they might they might have nasty friends like they might have russets and they, may, they might have who, who the fuck knows man fungus gnats that they got fucking spider mites riding on their ass you know what i mean like you just never know and then they come to work and, and boom so to me like ipm on something like that um i would be a lot a lot heavier a lot heavier on um me personally um just for like my little little medical thing at, at the house or whatever um you know i'm i still do an ipm as far as like you know i'll spray a little something you know here and there but i'm I'm more along the lines of like an ounce of prevention is worth 100 pounds of cure. So I'm just looking to block that off. And I, I, I keep a vigilant eye out, you know. And I'm, I'm more into the microbial thing because like to me, like um, the likelihood of like a bug thing happening versus like a spore that I don't see. So I'm more I'm more vigilant against say like powdery mildew, and I, I really like the uh, some of those exotic uh, beneficial microbes that you can you know spray around and keep your mom's good and happy and healthy. Little mineral oil, and like I you know I try to like make it like it's um it's a food thing too, along with the preventative maintenance. You know all all in one. You know that's why I like to like to be at. Like I said, just being very vigilant. Um, you know, watching, looking, getting you like a, a little cheap uh, digital scope, you know what I mean? Check your leaves out and everything. And, you know, you said just a little, little bit of prevention goes goes a hell of a long way. Yeah, yeah, it does, man. Noticing things early is huge. Like, you know, little mm -hmm. things. Notice that little mm -hmm. thing that's not supposed to be on your plant mm -hmm. and ask yourself, mm -hmm. what is it? Why is it there? You know? Yep. So, man, I've been... Uh, uh, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, we got a Christmas gift last, you know, obviously last Christmas. It's this thing called Masterclass, right? And you, yeah. you get to hear from like super famous people and they break shit down. And what I'm learning from watching a lot of these people, like, you know, some of these are like extremely famous individuals, is that it's the fucking basics for whatever you're trying to do. Like when you're getting down to the, this kind of stuff, it sounds almost like, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. But I, most people just don't put in the basic work at the beginning. They always right. are thinking ahead, trying to get more to like weight is, you know, where it's at because that's where the money is. But, uh, you know, watching this show and I think other shows, more people will realize that it's all about the repeat business. If you can get people to come back to you, then you don't have to go out there and work so hard. You can just get out there and focus on your farm. Because when you do uh, start to build up your own brand and kind of the underground aspects, you have to, in a way, understand, obviously, creating the product, but you got to find networking skills. And a lot of us, including myself for a long time, I liked kind of being recluse. You know, it was just mm -hmm. myself and a business partner for a while. And we kind of lived that lifestyle for years where it was just no one came to the house. I don't, I don't give a fuck, yeah. you know, your mom, yeah. you, you know, no one came to the fucking house. And, and there, there were certain rules on that that allowed us to be successful. Uh, but then on the same same time, Duke, I think I lost myself a little bit as well because we got kind of like, you know, we were eating a lot of mushrooms too back then and stuff. So it was kind of like, you know, you want to remember the societies out there. You want to you want to interact with people. So there's a balance there. But the ego of wanting to show off your grow when you first start out, especially if you're successful, that, that I think that temptation is there for everybody that first starts out. But yeah. once it's become kind of more of just mainstream, uh, you know, I would hope that you kind of move on past that point. So if you know from the beginning, hey, you're going to feel like you want to show off. It's like a new car, I guess, or something to you. You know, you're successful at doing something fun, uh, but you need to resist that temptation because that is the number one way. I think why we fucked up a ton of grows uh, first starting out is because we were always inviting people over asking what the problems were. I think those problems were is that we kept inviting people over that had spider. It was, it was more like spider mites back then. And then, of course, russet mites is that times yeah. 10 when you're a brand new farmer. Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah. And like I said, the, you know, people, <clears throat> they, they're trying to, they're trying to just totally skip the script, man. You know, like you got to start basic. You got to, you know, try to master those basics. 
and then you know you go from there and if you know if you get those basics down and you're doing very well and you know you got a you got a friend you know um it's like yeah you know i'm doing this because you know your your friend is showing you their weed maybe they're growing the same thing you're like wow they're yielding a little more or there's a little, little little smellier or whatnot and they turn you on to to some things that they do um i don't recommend changing more than one one thing at a time that way you got some type of metric to say this worked this did not work you know and you can narrow it down because you, you changed the, the the one thing so just keeping it simple and building building slowly because <clears throat> you know i can't count how many times you know people you know say like oh yeah you know um you know my shit's uh looking potassium deficient and nitrogen deficient and this and that but you know and they start wanting to you know feed more and more and more and they don't realize like you've been you've been feeding cow mag like it's like it's going out of style you you've you've introduced like a lockout through you know this this toxicity so you know understanding the basics of plant available not plant available mobile nutrients immobile nutrients Just understanding those basics um and what the plant needs at its most basic level to to do what you want it to do um and then watering <laughs> you know people thinking oh man i'm getting all these problems and oh it's drooping these russets <laughs> and it's like well they're they're, they're waterlogging their plants you know they're, they're watering way too much they don't put enough aeration in their soil or whatnot and they're going off of some guy saying oh yeah i'm watering every other day and then they're watering every other day but the guy every other day has got more aeration in his soil maybe his humidity's not in check maybe he's running at like 25 percent and you know you're in your humidity's not in check either and you're at like you know 70 percent you know environmental variables you know you can't go on like a like a cookie cutter thing you know so by understanding those basics um you know you, you'll be a lot better off for it you know and it's going to keep you from running into problems and if you do run into a problem you'll know how to remedy it you know so yeah yeah that part i was joking is that we're not calling that a jay-z bar man because it's off the cuff uh, and it's just terrific. It's like a, you know, a, a legendary bar because especially when you first get into it, man, you learn about kelp or you learn about crab meals. Like you start adding all these different amendments, you know, Layton's famous for saying that, you know, you're being a moron, meaning that you're just putting more on and more on just to like, I don't mm -hmm. know, to, to make things shiny, I guess, or to feel like you're really farming. Um, and then oh, yeah. of course, when you, when you start to actually get some stripes, you know, on, on your, on your vest, uh, you realize that it is, it's the simple stuff and, and kind of breaking this yeah. stuff down and realizing, all right, I added one amendment. I'm going to see what, how these things work out. I'm going to really pay attention to this. Uh, it, it, those are people probably have wasted months or years, not really even kind of just coasting probably in life and not realizing what they were doing by just constantly being like, oh man, there's some kind of deficiency. Okay. Let's add more kelp. Or like we, there was a joke for a while, more cow, cow mag, like the more cowbell from the <laughs> Saturday Night Live skits, you know, like people <laughs> just thought that that's how you grew high end cannabis. And you want you, it was just silly, man. And the, the forums and stuff is why I think those really started to take off when they did is because people were having so many problems. They were just trying to find ways. Um, and of course, as time progressed, like overgrow was one that I thought where people were actually trying to help each other, not troll each other. Yeah. And, you know, the, the thing is, like, these plants, you know, they're, they're not strippers at the shoe show, man. They don't respond to dollars being thrown at them, right? Like, that doesn't work, <laughs> you know. They're, you know, and they have very basic needs, and it's one of those things where less is more. And when it comes to, um, when it comes to growing weed, man, like, <laughs> I've always noticed that it's like very typically uh, the majority of people, they, they, they never underdo shit. It's always over. Like way too much of this, way too much of that. You know, you got to, you know, hit the, hit the median and, you know, and maybe try working yourself up instead of going like way on the high end, you know, because um, I've had a lot of friends that, that were going that route and you give them a clone, they grow it. And, you know, their yields are, 
or kind of shit, you know, half or less, and you're like, well, what the hell are you doing? And you find out, you know, their feed regimens, like, hey, man, you're, you're running that way too hot. And they're, they're not necessarily, you know, seeing burns and shit like that, but, you know, I'm like, well, you know, why don't you cut that feed in half, basically, and uh, try running it like that and see the yields and the quality go up. So, you know, less less is more in in most most cases, you know. And you'll definitely as you're growing plants, and that's another thing is people are they're constantly switching up for the next best thing, the next best thing. And in like this market, especially with the the seeds and everything, this dudes are like looking to push like here's the next thing, here's the next thing. People aren't really running the same thing over and over and over and really dialing things in. But, you know, if you do have something very special, um, definitely put that work in to, to dial it in. You know, so like from seed, <coughs> I'll grow everything. You know, I might give it a couple little pinches to get a bush up a little bit. But I, I grow it more all natural and I kind of see what, what all is going on. Um then, you know, I'm going to find my keeper, and then on the next round, um, if it's something, like I said, I'm, I'm really into, um, I'll take multiple clones, and I'm going to grow these clones, and one of them I'm going to top. You know, another one I'm going to, like, really, really bush it out and have, like, a, you know, 8, 10, 12, you know, tops all growing off. Um, and then I'll probably, you know, grow another one that's, you know, uh, you know, a couple pinches, bush it up, a little bit of a dominant cola. Um, that way I can see if it's yielding right. Um, if the plant gets all funky, you know, with, you know, distribution of like growth auxins and all, and instead of having, you know, you know, 10 big donkey dick buds, it all turned into a bunch of equally small buds that would have equaled to one. You know what I mean? So then you're understanding like the best way to get your yields through your, um, your space management. You know, because like, you know, for y'all that are growing in a tent, you know, your four by four, you know, every every bit of that is uh, very crucial. And back in the day, you know, I, I saw some really amazing shit going down. People just in like a spare closet where they made these little grow cabinets. And I mean, utilizing every, every spare little inch of space to, to get the most out of it. So you can understand um, a little bit of what's going on there, and then maybe play around with the, uh, you know, where the the one that you haven't topped all crazy or whatever uh, that you grew like similar to the first run. Um, maybe try feeding that one a little bit, a little bit heavier. You know, maybe try to boost it up a little bit. You know, maybe you'll see things that you were correcting in round one where you were like, ah, you know, it seemed a little, a little more hungry here. So try to correct that. You know that that next run and uh, maybe give it a little bit of a boost and see if you if you come out better on that. So after all this, you'll understand what's the best shape to go with, and you'll 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 get a better idea on like what it wants, you know, food wise and all. But also take uh, take some different uh, buds, um, you know, at different harvest dates. Because, like, the last time, you know, you might have had your little jeweler's loop out, and you're like, all right, 64 days seem to be the day. Well, your environment <clears throat> might have changed between then and now, plus you're running from clone. So you're scoping, and, you know, look for that, that, that point, like, leading up right before that. Take a few buds before that day. Take some buds, you know, on that day, and then leave some to go a little bit after that day. And then you might, you know, sample ones and be like, wow, you know, the stuff that was like three days later was a whole hell of a lot more potent and it had a little more stink and flavor on it, too. So then you're starting to dial that in more. And then on your next run, you'll know what shape to grow. So you're growing them all the same shape and you'll be in that that range of, you know, where it, what it looked like when you pulled it and you felt that that was the best. And then play, play around with that, you know, day here, day there uh, harvest tip, too. And uh, that's that's really really how you'll get you get your shit dialed, and you'll be able to grow it to like you know genetic potential, like the best that you can, you know. Yeah, I don't you know even we do the show every week, you know. I don't think enough people talk about like especially at the beginning of understanding a balanced canopy and what that can really achieve for a room, or oh, what yeah. you can achieve if you only have a really kind of small space and you're just learning to dial in what you've got. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, hell yeah. Temperature is a big one too. Yeah, yeah. Temperature and humidity and airflow, um, so crucial, so crucial. And without environment, you know, you're not able to get it to go optimal. So, like, when you do have your environment really dialed in, um, you'll notice that, you know, it's growing faster. Therefore, it, it might want that that extra extra feed, you know, and you'll see it, um, you know, come back uh Come back quite quite a bit, you know. It's it's a it's a huge difference if you can get your environment dialed. And like, oh, I get it. Like, I've been in all types of fucked up spots, you know, just trying to trying to make it happen. But um, in places, and especially nowadays, it's so much easier. You know, you don't have to dig out a hole underneath of a house and uh, crawl under it to you know get you get you grow on and shit. Um, you know, you can you can really dial those tents in, get your humidity and your temperature just right, and uh, get everything you know dialed in this little microclimate. And like I like I get it, you know, like yeah, it might you know it might be legal, but still like you you want to get the most that you can out of the space that you have. Um, so yeah, just understanding like environment and then nu- nutrition and all that stuff will complement genetics genetics doesn't dictate those two those two will dictate the genetic and get into that potential and then the rest is the x factor of yourself and um like i said knowing the proper proper watering and um other 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 various aspects of it you know but keeping it simple and understanding the plant and then understanding your specific plant that you're trying to optimize yeah keeping it keeping it um consistent too like you said watering's big keeping your water and consistent how you do it how you you know apply that water and you want that soil to be evenly wet you know yeah. uh, you know dude for me like you you hit some great points but like for me growing a plant again is almost as fun as growing a new seed like when i'm doing yeah. it like changing the temperature um like i got a strain that i really like um growing it grows really great in the cool I grew it in the heat, didn't like it as much. It was still mm-hmm. fire, but it was a lot hairier. You know, it didn't yeah, have that right. bag appeal. You know what I'm saying? Got the oh, woolly yeah. bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's why, man. you know, temp's a big factor too to consider, you know, when you're thinking about that overall, you know, product. And, you know, we were talking about the, the old Danny, right? Um, you know, one thing about her, she hates bright light. Like anytime oh. we grew it, you know, yeah, we either had the lights dim down little bit for like big runs <clears throat> or like if she's just in the room you know and you got a plant or two for the head you know we always put her in the corner to the side as far away from the light and she always performed the best if you put it under right directly under de lights man and like everybody else is happy man she wilt down and everything uh not happy at all uh you turn it down a little bit she you know get kind of happy but you'd mm-hmm. see her go to sleep before the light comes off you know she's just overworking so you know you do have that that part to dial in too um you know you can get like a light a light meter and everything um and figure out you know exactly what what you moles are are doing best for you like me personally like i'll start off you know obviously like if you got signs like it's too much light you know crank it the fuck down but i'll i'll start you know kind of median you know uh toward you know and kind of kind of step it up a little bit and then uh you know if you got a light meter or whatever you can you know write it down see where you malls are at on the canopy and whatnot mm-hmm. and then you know on the on the next runs right you can uh you can tweak that tweak that a little bit and really really dial that in as well i think like yeah. you want to be around like what is it like 800 you know is is pretty pretty good um you know some things take more you know things like that ganny are going to take a take a bit less so that's good to know man yeah yeah because you know like i usually typically i like to be around a thousand and heavy you know heavy flower and i'm going hard but see that's good to know Mm -hmm. on that ganny because i did get some um some seeds from uh, jolly pond farm i don't know if you know them shout out to them um they did a little ganny um yeah they're good people he did a nice little ganny 
run some will run some of those seeds and now knowing that now does the um i guess she doesn't feed as heavy as well with that light or does she still eating heavy and then but just doesn't like that light uh doesn't like the light just keep it between like seven and eight hundred umo somewhere in that range um definitely defoliate her like a little bit more so because like she she throws a lot of fans so getting all those inward fans off and those innermost nodes, um, get them cleaned off. Um, and with her, it, it's pretty much like a, a median to, to low on the, on the feed. Um, you know, she'll, she'll like, you know, I know you're in soul too. So, you know, the same shit applies. Like I'd say a little back guano tea week five, six, seven, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, putting on that little bit of extra biomass. Um, calcium's kind of kind of a, a big thing with her too. Um, yeah, and, and I run the, I run calcium on her till about week five. You know, and I'm also introducing um, a magnesium feed. You know, around then too, and then keeping that through five, six, and seven. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah she'll get old fat for you real real fat oh yeah i'm looking forward to it i know you'll know right away when it when it's that when it's got that turf that you're looking for with the gany <sighs> oh yeah yeah you smell it when you go in the room man typically like yeah the ones that do the best like you know touch that bud and it's like sap like pine tar you know sticky shit do the in your opinion, man, from the stuff that you've done, like when you're walking through the room, you do a stem rub. Uh, is that a real good example of what it's going to be? Okay. Yeah. yeah no, do you mind, do you mind so kind of talking about that? Um. So like it, it's cool. Um. And I have I have seen it kind of be a little indicator, but maybe one percent of the time or, or less, you know. Cause like I've had some stuff that's like hella hella nasty on the smell, like on a on a stem rub, and it's some of the freest, nicest shit that there is, you know. So yeah, you get so um, excited. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Like the is the the stem rub gang that be breeding like that too. I guess that's how they get them releases out so quick. They don't need to even grow the female. Be like, that's that one's got the rub, man, and that one, that boy too. That's my stud. I'm going to get these things made right off the get-go, first run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to agree, man. That rub isn't all for me, and, you know, it isn't always 100, but you do get addicted to doing it, you know. You go oh, by yeah. Mm. yeah, it ain't like nothing that. wrong with it. Yeah, you know, nothing wrong with it. Like, I like, you know, stinky plants and veg, you know. That's uh tells me a little something, you know. And it might not be indicative of the, you know, the, the finished smell of that plant, but, you know, I do like that it's putting in that that effort to, to put out a little little stink for us. One thing I do instead of now rub, I do a little crush. I crush my stems all. I'm just if I you know don't if I'm just in there observing the plants, I crush just one little crush. Work it all the way up the stem, not to the point that it'll bend over, but mm -hmm. then you'll notice it'll just start bulking right. up and just getting gnarly looking on the stems. Yeah, I do. If you you're like, running. if you're at that point too, pull uh, pull them little fans that are starting to grow out. Pull those little fans off the little nodes right there, and then do that little pinch. And then once he's healed up, man, they'll they'll shoot off, become dominant branches on you. It's a good way to like fill in like those little little gap spaces and shit. Mm-hmm. Boom. Hey, so when you're running through your plants doing pheno hunts and stuff, and you and you see like uh, you know in veg, some of these are starting to show rails and stuff, even on some of those smaller fan leaves. Is that indication of like, hey, this might be this might be a keeper we want to keep our eye on? Um, and I guess this is a two twofold question. And then also sometimes with that, I've noticed that those same genetics, when you clone them, they'll bleed. Um, is that also indication of something that this is, this should be at least, you know, you keep your eye on and really run through and see if it's a keeper. Right on. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like more, more resin production for me, you know, that's automatically, uh, I'm definitely going to like that. It might not end up being my, my keeper because, you know, something else might have 
maybe a little less resin, but the uh, you know terpene development was like way higher. And it tasted better. It was more potent. You know, so you know it, it ain't a bad thing though. If I can get, get all of the above, that's cool. Um, now on um, as far as like plants bleeding and stuff, it's like certain genetic lines. Um, they they typically do that. You know, it's a lot of certain types of sativas like I'm, I know there's like a quite a few out there that'll do it but you know it's uh it's pretty pretty neat <laughs> does that indicate anything you know that that hey you should keep your eye on that or is that just hey every now and then certain genetics do that um there's yeah i mean it, it could be it depends on the like maybe like the line you're you're breeding or growing uh, of course like the finished flower is going to you know, really tell you what's up, but, uh, during breeding, um, that might be like one of those traits that could be predictable, you know, uh, within a population, the ones that do typically exhibit this and this, and, you know, might be those desired things that you're looking for. And that might be something that might make or break it on your male selection. You know, it, it could be a, could be a good thing. And have you ever, when you're running through stuff, um, get, come across a mutant that you've that you've actually ever had as a keeper? Or are those a complete um, waste of time? I've, I've seen it seen it go both ways. You know, uh, back in the day, I grew like a bunch of DJ short stuff, um, <clears throat> and like he he bred for mutants. You know, so like a bunch of crazy shit would would pop out, um, and sometimes, yeah. You know, you, you'd find what you want. Other times, no. Within my own stuff, um, I've seen it kind of go both both ways. You know, depends on the uh, on the mutation and all. You know, so yeah, it just it always kind of comes down to the you know that that end result and what it what it's all about. Um, you know, you get like trifolates and things like that and certain certain things like it, it it seemed like those those uh females which you know trifolates you know typically they're they're males but um that certain females were that were trifolate were like you know leaps and bounds better than the than the others you know across like a large population so you know it's kind of kind of cool yeah man and there's such like a debate on that whether they're worth your time or not so i appreciate your candid response on that because you know it, it does seem like you can find some weird like duck foot weird dr yeah. spoon style i mean i know those are very extreme variations and stuff but oh yeah yeah i mean and that's, and everything the, in between. that's the thing man yeah you just never know what you're what you might or might not find i mean like i've had little uh little runt plants you know that most people are like oh you know get it out get it out get it out um i've had it to where yeah they they did suck and i, I did end up throwing them away at the end but i've also had it come out you know and they were some of the best plants that there were out of out of the the, the whole population so you know it just depends i guess on your space and the person and you know but i, I found some real gems man so me personally like i i'll grow a mutant out I run out i'll let it i'll let it have its day you know and until it shows me otherwise you know bee leaf his uh creature is like he's got a whole line off that and she's somewhat of a mutant you know and yeah. he doesn't release that plant per se because of the issues but he creep throws that at everything and he comes out with some really nice stuff so i think yeah. when you can dial it in and really work it brian probably you know it's probably worth it but it probably takes a lot of time to get there obviously yep. um one thing nice. about runts duke sorry sorry to cut you out when you um on runts like i'm doing a little selection um but like i got a runt in the group and i'm like not even gonna clone that all right because i'm not a breeder now as a breeder would you go ahead and take one off that runt just in case the smoke and everything else was fired and then you could throw that back at some or would you kind of say nah too small of stature we're not even gonna mess with that um, I typically clone everything. Uh, if you want the best weed of your life, don't clone it. You know what I mean? Correct. <laughs> that's just how it's going to work. You want it to rain, man, go, go wash your car. You know what I mean? Like, then it, you'll be trying to rebadge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, man. But yeah, I'm, I'm big on, 
if I'm if I'm running through shit to 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 find a keeper, uh, I'm gonna keep a clone of everybody and uh, and see what all what all's going on, and then at the end, um, and sometimes even like before I'm chopping, like there's just some things. It's like there's no smell or anything. It's small or whatever, and it's like yeah, even if it's you know the most potent in the world, like I'm just wanting my thing, so I can go ahead and say, all right, number twenty three, you're you're, you're coming out, you know, and then you go back to actually blazing and everything and revisiting each one over a month or so. Um, you know, you can, you can whittle it down and normally you're always left with like, well, it depends what you start with, but a good, good hunt for me typically always ends up with like somewhere between five and seven that I always have a hard time with, you know, and then I just kind of got to revisit them and then I'm growing them from clone again. And then right. making making up my mind. Does that does that equate to about ten percent? You think, man, roughly on what you do? So you know. Yeah, yeah, it could 10%. be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ten percent are a tough choice, you know. Yeah, they really, they really are, man. They really are. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I normally yeah. I'll find good homes for them too, because like I have friends. It's like, you know four out of five of us all agree you know this one but you know there's that one boy's like i don't know man that one there it's like all right well there's your there's your baby take good care right. of it <laughs> so. heck yeah yeah man um what are you uh so what are your thoughts man I'm kind of switching gears i guess so some people say you know depends where the seed was was bred like okay if it was bred in cali in the desert hills and then I get it here in Virginia in the humid environment. Are those things to, that would be like stressful to the plant as it's growing, in your opinion? Uh, that's like, you know, epigenetics and acclimation, and like that that takes that takes a hot minute, you know, to to really play a play a part. Um, and that's also something if you were growing something that's been in say. Afghanistan for like a thousand years, you know, um, you know, the plants might just very obviously be very pissed off in your environment, but, uh, we're growing inside. Right. And that's something in our control. So we could kind of, you know, dial it in a little, a little bit more, you know, to make, make those, uh, those plants a little, a little happier, you know, maybe run so it a little mean, bit, a little drier. As the grower, you want to go ahead and take take control of that and give that plant what it wants and what it's been expecting. Be more successful that way. Definitely. Yeah, if that's my jam, yeah, if that's my jam and I'm looking to hunt that out, you know, um, yeah. and have that, that clone that I'm going to keep, yeah, I want to, like I say, kind of cater to it um, and, you know, see what I can do. And then after that point, you know, maybe over time that, you know, it'll uh, come around and join the others, <laughs> you know, being happy. All right, man. So we got, what are you thinking about? Um, so you don't like autos. We kind of got through that part. Um, switch it more over to like. It's not my place. Yeah, mine too, man. I, and I. I've had talked to a lot of people and I still want to try them sometime and I just haven't gotten around to it. You know, you know, I grew autos like way, way back in the day, man. Like, uh, dude, this was, uh, M dancing. He, he, uh, he had these ones called low riders. He sent me a whole, whole fuck ton of them, man. And I uh, grew them out. I'm like, those are, those are pretty neat. You know, just throw them out. You know, you get a little bud on the stick. Yeah. Unless yeah. they, they don't, work and then they end up being like a big old root or alice plant those ones suck because yeah, the idea was like the you know you grow it around some some hedges and some bushes and get your little gorilla grow on right in the city <laughs> yeah it don't matter some about that green that just stands out no matter how much green is around you know what i mean oh uh, yeah man yeah i definitely do no worries man it's just the creeper man <laughs> that's right Hey, so for like uh, the young, younger dudes in the game that, that want to get into the washing, do you think <clears throat> moving forward, Duke, that you're going to kind of maybe start to focus your more, more of your stuff for that aspect of the game? 
Mm. I, you know, that is that is a possibility. Um, if I if I'm looking to do like a hash plant type of a you know project and stuff, that would be something that you know that could be definitely considered. Like you know, but you know, even even out of a population you'll have just you know certain individuals that are more exceptional that will give you more of a return you know and that's just that's just how it is but in the past like i have been like you know breeding more for you know certain certain resins versus others but uh, other times it's just it's just nothing you can you can really put in your control like that you know you're going after one thing it might just be a real grease ball <laughs> you know so, um, but yeah, it's always, it's always cool when they do. Another thing is like, you know, people say, oh yeah, it washes good. It washes good. It washes good. Yeah, great. But, you know, I notice and then like motherfuckers are taking some, some really gnarly, gnarly weed and they're washing it and then it don't smell for shit. You know what I mean? Like those, those terpenes have been kind of, kind of washed off. You know what I mean? So just because it returns, it necessarily mean it should be, be washed and, uh, me personally, like, so much fucking work, man. I'm, I'm more into, you know, and like, this is just me, me personally. I can hear Denver right now. But, um, I, I like my dry sieve, man. And I can clean it up. If I want rosin, I'll smash it. You know what I mean? Simple, simple as that. Nice little, nice little tumbler, some dry ice and shit like that. Shit, man. Make it easy. Make it money. easy. Fuck yeah, man! Way easy. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. So what do you so do like um, oily versus sticky, man? You know what I mean. Like sometimes, you know, some plants are just oily. Some are just sticky. Does I imagine the sticky ones are gonna be better for hash? I mean, what's your experience? Do you breed for sticky? I mean, does that even factor into it? Um, it just it just kind of works out that way because certain individuals that we're that we're breeding with are you know. Progeny is typically going to be, like I said, more of that greasy kind of tar type of type of resin. Um, and then other stuff, you know, you get more of that dry, um, dry resin. Mm -hmm. The dry, the dry stuff or the fat head is, you know, generally like what's what, what you're looking for for, you know, dry sift or, you know, something with a, a head that can break off easy and not, you know, just be a goopy mess. Um so it's kind of kind of more more desired but you know like if you look in like old traditional hash like they do like in lebanon and stuff like that they just take it and they're just basically giving giving handies out to the plants you know and then just getting that shit off their hands you know you get that greasy shit yeah pretty much <laughs> you like that brian yeah giggity <laughs> Yeah, that's why I love hanging out with you, dude. Because you'll every now and then you'll just throw some shit down there like that, or tell your little uh, your little <laughs> stories, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, you lucky, man. You get all the you get all the real good ones. <laughs> wow, well, hot for TV. <laughs> that's right. Those are fun to hear, man, and real to hear. You know, there's a lot of shit that people just don't realize in this from the the bad side so you're, you're very lucky that most of you are farming right now uh, from a legal standpoint so uh, you know count your blessings on that and go full force with this and put time and effort into it um, and if you, this, you're brand new to this then like duke and marco and myself and everybody that's a part of this channel start so slow that you're just focused on a successful flip and then really yeah. start to to understand things like your your goal when you walk down there is to really check the environment every single day. That should be probably the first thing you, you know, that that's, you know, you got your, especially as you get better at this, you got your little mental checklist and you realize, all right, I got to do this, do that. And it'll be however you kind of, you know, it'll be your formula, your little flow of you know, how you set your thing up, but the environment should be paramount. Um, and too many people are so focused on trying to make money. And it's like, well, the yield matters, yes, uh, when you're doing it successfully. Uh, but if you're pumping out stuff or you're having a bunch of herms because maybe you are overfeeding or your environment's too bad when now you got powdery mildew, well, you know, that's those are zero dollars. That's that's wasted time and effort. And I promise that happened to a lot of us when we first were getting into this. 
Uh, we just low money's made better a lot than no money, baby. Hell yeah, man. Keep it slow, slow. This isn't, um, you know, there's there's huge misconceptions, I think, Duke, when you're talking hustling cannabis compared to other things in life. You know, there is fast money with that stuff. You can't step on cannabis, right, Marco? No, you know, no. It's not really a thing where you can just keep it going and going. So you got to put in the time and effort to actually create this Dude, kind even, of stuff. Even before, that, even come before back. that fish scale, man, before that fish scale ever got stepped on, it started with farmers growing for years a, a, a field of cocoa plants and like, what is it, like an acre? It's like an acre of the shit or something. Goes into one kilo of that shit. You know what mm. I mean? So no wine before it's time, right? You know, whether you're brewing beers or wine, like follow your heart and know your basics and, you know, just try to refine your craft a little bit at a time. Like me, like I just try to get a little better each time I do it. You know, and that's after, goddamn, nineteen what nineteen ninety four, right? So, till now, oh. like I, I'd be damned if <laughs> you call me a master grower. I'd just <laughs> laugh in your face, man. You say, ain't no, ain't no such thing, man. You can't master mm-hmm. this shit. Just try to get a little bit better each time. That's right. Yeah, that's let right. that for you out there that hear that kind of stuff. I promise you, that person is a fugazi individual if they're using that. Like if. Granted, if they're, you know, Duke, if they're coming up to stage with some of that stuff, I've heard like the pr- presentation person say that. And then the, the grower, like, give them that look, like, what did you just fucking call me? You know? Uh, but <laughs> but for most in the industry, that's almost a derogatory term. Yeah. Um, it's somebody that's probably hacked their way into certain things and now wants the community to think that they're a master grower or a, you know, master farmer. Yeah. That's when you focus you know, on the wrong. I was a master electrician, man. I even laughed at that shit. I was like, if there was ever a master electrician, it was probably like Nikola Tesla. You know what I mean? But even he would be like, yeah, he he ain't mastering this shit. (laughs) That's right. Hey, y'all said something big. I hit you with the gold bar, Brian, environment, man. If you guys are going to spend some money, spend it on that environment. Mm -hmm. Dial that environment Mm -hmm. in. That's going to save you the most headaches from pest pressure. That's, you know, that's kind of your starting point. You know, you can't even start fighting a yeah. pest until your environment is in a good, you know, condition. So um, for me, yeah. key one, uh, get that environment dialed in, man. Hey, look what Ryan just showed me. So for us old Boom. cats, we definitely didn't have any of this kind of shit. No, you so he's running that? 82, uh-huh. 70. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're a younger individual... And you understand technology and you're understanding how to farm cannabis. Now you have something where you can in real time. I don't even know how you're doing that. What program is that? It's a troll master. Troll master, right? That's what I like about the new generation, Duke and Marco. I mean, these guys understand stuff and probably teach a, a lot of us how to do a, a variety of things. To keep the, the, the focal point, I guess, on the grow itself, I, I don't want people to... F- kind of forget that yes technology is fantastic but there is no substitution for being in the grow each and every day and even if it's you know a set it's your quote-unquote day off i still think you need to drive over there if that's how it is or run down to your basement and tent and just kind of check on things i mean Mm -hmm. that could be a 15 minute thing uh, but that should be a daily focus and i think sometimes you get lost in a lot of this technology or people are pitching it to you when you're first getting into this like oh yeah you don't even have to go in your grow for a couple days uh, for me personally, when I hear that kind of stuff, I, my ears flap over and I don't hear, I don't listen to another word they're saying, or I try to move on to the next booth politely. Yeah. But, but yeah. It, I think it's just some of the worst advice I see. And it's, it's still being spread at some of the, you know, larger, like, um, hydroponic type expos, uh, that the goal is not to be in the, in the grow room. Yeah. And the, you know, they're all tools, right? But, yeah. you know, it's all saying be, be smarter than the tool you're working with. Right. So, um, you know, that work, that workspace, um, knowing why, why that temperature and that humidity needs to be, you know, where it needs to be. Your, uh, you know, you understanding your VPD and everything um, and understanding that airflow. And then these tools, they go, they're going to make it easier for you, you know, naturally. Like, you can check it on the phone. Like, that's hella cool. But it's no substitution for the 
the best instrumentation we got, and that's our nose and our eyes and everything, and being able to, you know, physically see. Because, um, you know, like I said, you, 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 you spot a, a thrip or, you know, a mite or something like that, you know, on the, on the day that you wouldn't have normally gone, you might be able to go ahead and, and, and get that settled real quick versus, you know, letting them, you know, run them up for two days or, or whatever. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's always good to, you know, like I said, at least peep in and, and go over that first part of your checklist, even if there's no work to be done, you know, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just good, good, good habit, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or like little things happen. Like somehow a plant got knocked over or like somehow a light, you know, one of the lights blew up, you know, finally ran out or there's just like little nuances that you can check, uh, that, that make a dramatic difference. Uh, whether you're growing in your basement or you're growing for somebody else at a larger facility. And especially if you're growing for yourself at a larger facility, all of those little nuances add up to, to making profit at the end of the year or finding mm -hmm. ways to, you know, mm -hmm just kind of move the process a little bit quicker. So eventually you have, uh, you know, an extra flip. Um, I think, I think all of that stuff is, is, is now how the industry is dialing in where we were joking before we even came on the air, you know, back in the day, it was very prideful, I guess, to, to spend a lot of money on newts. Um, and, and now it's the exact opposite. And I, I really like that aspect of where the industry is going as far as individuals that love uh, building soil system is that it's you know pennies on the dollar you know you almost it, it's it's not a um because I, I don't i don't ever want to like feel like i'm cheap i like i like being um you know like frugal frugal but at the same time like it's it's still about quality so if i can make it myself and we're making it for pennies just because it's i'm doing it for pennies doesn't necessarily in this world mean that it's it's subpar quality and I think once farmers start to realize that as well, it's like, well, yeah, I am, I'm making it for cheap, but I'm not, you know, for the most part, unless you are spending a ton of money on nutrients, your, your work and time and effort is that you're making something that you couldn't purchase at your local grow mm -hmm. store. It's above and beyond. It's far superior, especially when we're getting into like the IMOs and stuff, Marco. I mean, that's kind of what I was talking about all weekend. You know, we got Ryan here that's now doing his own kind of IMOs and stuff and playing around with stuff. So it's like the torch keeps getting passed on that aspect. And Duke, I think if you really start to play around with natural farming, man, and you dive deeper into the jajam aspects, um, I mean, there's, <laughs> you know, the, the future is obviously bright for you, man, on that. So I, and I also think that Marco would love to chop it up with you on that kind of stuff. So those are two bright yeah. minds. I think, you know, I'm always looking to learn more and, you know, yeah, you guys could definitely trade good for every, everybody. Like try to learn. Got to get you to VA. Uh, I'll be there. I'll be there at SkunkCon, whether or not it happens or not. I'll, I'll still, I know. I'm still coming through. They pushed it back. We got to help. Man, you know how many people ask me yeah, to ask you about that? Yeah, oh, we'll dude, be there. Yeah, I'll be there. Be. Is that going on or? Yeah, yeah, they said uh, like mid November, you know. Yeah, so, they moved it back. Uh, yeah, and I'll be there. Like I said, dude, I'm gonna. I don't know I'm anything there, about it. Um, regardless. Yeah, you need to come, Brian. Yeah. Skunk Con. Uh, yeah. Gene Traders yeah, is putting it on. I'll shoot you a link on yeah. there on Instagram. Looking, looking for the skunkiest weed, man. So we're gonna oh, whole, whole crew showing up, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. And we got like my boy. He's got a bunch of farmland up in Hanover. Um, we got a big bonfire, barbecue, moonshine, the whole, the whole works, man. Okay. It'll be a big old thing. So even if they, even if they don't have it, man, like still going to do that. We can just all go out there during the day and just do whatever. Yeah. Shoot me that address. That sounds, mm -hmm. that sounds like mm -hmm. some fun right there. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. best skunks, be man. I'm like, when I ask him, man, and I'm like, yeah, Duke's going to be there. You better get your shit together. <laughs> And I would think the best skunk is probably in your like father's closet or like shoe drawer or some shit. I know the stuff that a ton of people know. forgot about that didn't. Because we were, uh, I heard uh, like uh, Ed Rosenthal talk and, and a couple of like Jorge Cervantes and a few others. And they were saying that from like their standpoint, the skunks, the true skunks were being bred so that that stuff would be eliminated um because of you know you, if you're growing it in your house and it fucking reeks like that everybody yeah. kind of knows that that's you know there's not a million skunks yeah. walking around yeah. so what is that 
Yeah, is, it, is there is popped. there truth in that? Like, has everything been watered down in the industry basically because mm. people were getting caught because it was so skunky? There was a time where, like, you would see in um, certain seed menus, like bread for being low odor. You know, like as a as a positive. You know, um, I t- I never I never subscribed to that to that whole thing, but yeah. it, it was it was a thing though. It definitely. It was a thing like uh, sour diesel, like, man, a lot of people went down because they were growing that plant. But like you had to understand, like you're growing smelly weed, you, you need to have like extra protocols in place to, to not get busted. You know, it's not just a carbon scrubber. You know, you need Ona gel. You know, you need that shit in little little glass jelly jars and keep them by the windowsills, keep them by any entrance and exit and everything, you know, to to add that extra layer of protection and then like don't go running around in the plants and then go to the store you know what i mean like don't don't be stupid <laughs> you know that's that's a good way to get get yourself had you know so but that leads back to that reclusive lifestyle you know like you lived out you know away from people you do your thing you still keep all those scents down because you never know, man. You may have Jehovah's Witness come knock on your door. You wait out in the middle of nowhere. He's trying to tell you about Jesus or whatever. Uh, you may have a census worker. You, you just never know who, who might roll up. You know, it's just it's just like that sometimes. So, you know, you, you had to <laughs> definitely, there's extra layers of prevention in the smell department, you know, if you were going to go that route and grow the, the stinky sting, you know. And, you know, even with your outdoor, after your outdoor was done, like, shit, <laughs> you're going to be hanging and drying somewhere. So, you know, you got to make sure that shit was kind of off grid and you, you took that same protocol. Hey, I learned, too, from a lawyer when you are living out in the sticks and you don't want people coming up to your stuff. When you say, like, no soliciting by law, that doesn't mean shit. But if you put up a bunch of signs that say no trespassing, uh, I guess by law, that does mean something. So for you guys yeah. that live out there uh, that maybe don't have a few of those signs up, uh, maybe think about that. And dude always joked about getting a few of those uh, beware of dogs, even if you don't have a dog, because uh, most people are afraid of getting bit. Yeah. <laughs> and the old classic, uh, was it? The trespassers would be shot. Survivors would be shot again. <laughs> mm-hmm. You see that a lot in Virginia. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's a little standby. <clears throat> well, that country living, mountain living style, where you know you 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 choose to live like that. So if somebody's coming at you, yeah. you, best believe that they, you know, especially where you know Georgia, Virginia, certain certain aspects of the the South, uh, everybody has a few guns within They're about really that large life. length uh, because yeah. of that reason, man. Because nobody nobody wants that for their family, so it's. It's kind of like a nuclear thing almost like I can end you, you can end me. So let's just be cool with each other. Be cool. um, and oh, I think yeah. a lot of that country living it is that way where it's just like, I respect you. I respect your land. Don't fuck with mine and everything's fine. Uh, it's just when yeah, exactly. idiots like me, when I was younger, do like cow tipping and stuff, you know, and the, the people running out with the shotgun. Thank God. I don't think they were aiming it at us, they but they were definitely shooting it in the air. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Makes you run real Dude quick. Hand over a big on that. Hell yeah, that rock salt burns for fucking days, man. Look. Oh yeah, my dad talks about that to this day. That rock salt when he was a kid, Whew. stealing watermelons. Shit fucking burns. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Ugh, yeah. oh, tough, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, another thing we want to touch on is with environment. You know, you know when. I, your body, your body is one of the best instruments. You know, I do have the um, the apps, the GoV, they monitor and all that. Um, but I walk down into my grow and, and feel it. You know, you, you can know, you know, when that temperature is right, when that environment is good. And right when I walk down into the grow, I can feel it on my legs, you know, because I go down there uh, early in the morning with my coffee. And when I feel that coolness on my legs, I'm like, all right, everything's good. Walking on in and, and then, then the thermometers and the humidity is all matching we're good to go so um just another little tidbit on the on the environment you know yeah man like say you don't want that muggy sticky feeling air you know you want that even though you might be running your humidity up a little bit um higher 
like so like for me like if i walk outside right now <clears throat> it's probably like 30 percent you know maybe even a little lower uh, definitely dry so when i walk into a room um it's gonna feel like a little bit you know you know if i'm running you know 60 percent you know on my humidity it's gonna feel yeah. weird when i walk in but see i'm looking i'm looking for that feel like you said um but even though you know if it, you got it running but that air circulation is good um yeah it doesn't it doesn't really feel that bad and you can look at the body language of those plants too they're, they're gonna let you know if they're happy if they're happy yeah. or they're pissed yeah. So it's kind of the opposite. You know how it is in Virginia. When we walk out the front door, you yeah. better have a sweat rag. You're gonna start sweating. Brian, uh, Brian saw that firsthand. Uh, kind of when we came out to DC, a little taste of that humidity. It reminded me of growing up in Savannah, where you take a shower, walk <laughs> yeah. outside. Yeah, exactly. everything you is know it. dripping. Yeah, you get you get out oh, the yeah. shower, dry off, and go outside, and you're wet again. You know, immediately. You feel gross, man. That's yeah, just yeah. gross. And that's yeah, the yeah, way your plants so. feel. You know, so. Definitely. Yeah, swamp ass, man. I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Colorado for that reason, man. There's no yeah, I do too. Yeah, I mean it does sometimes yeah. suck in the winter. It gets too little, too much, but yeah, you can walk outside. Yeah. It's, it feels good. Man. The thing that got me the most, like, and when I went to Las Vegas, just living out there, your drink wouldn't condensate. Like in Virginia, you'll get your drink will just pour water. Oh, yeah. It's so dry mm -hmm. out there. A cold drink with ice won't even condensate on a table. It's, it's wild. It's Something. Yes, yeah, it's, it's cool. That, that's it was like a year ago we were in Vegas. Yeah, we need to go back. Yeah. Go y'all out there. What are y'all doing, man? You counting cards, high rolling? No, we yeah. ain't counting cards. That shit is tough. <laughs> they make it they, they make a movie on it and everybody thinks they can do that but i promise you under the lights bro, and rain the, man the bro. boss and everything that shit is not yeah. easy you got to be mm -hmm. borderline genius to handle all the variables of that to be successful but i do think well, if you do, put time so and effort into best. playing poker because when you play poker you don't play against the house that you can yeah. find income for yourself for that oh yeah especially at like a local casino yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely seen that happen. Make a little side income, a little passive income. Just make sure you don't lose the other income. Yeah, you put your money down in there. <laughs> and you got to educate yourself for a while before you ever sit down at the table, I think. Otherwise, you're going to you're going to educate yourself by losing a lot of money. Hmm. Nobody wants yeah, to do that. That's an expensive education, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just go but there's a lot of YouTube that. channels just like this on the same <laughs> subject, you know. I think if you're if you're used to oh, hustling Poker will make uh, will kind of you'll enjoy that because if if you put the time and effort into it, you will be better than others, and you will be rewarded oh, yeah. for that because it is a game of skill. Yeah, yeah. I've never played. You know that? It's an interesting tidbit for you. I've never played a game of poker. That's probably good, dude. Yeah, that's yeah, a long. That's another long games. road. Yeah, nobody yeah, wants to go down that road it, unless they really understand what it is. Yeah, yeah I hate learning shit that cost me a bunch of money to learn. Like, man, <laughs> I gotta yeah. lose to learn. Being bad or something. Yeah, spades and blackjack. There we blackjack. go. I'll play some spades. Yeah, spades is a whole nother. That's yeah. uh that's a that's a fun game, especially with people that yes, really um, enjoy hustling and that kind of thing. Partner. Oh yeah. Talking yeah, yeah. shit. Old school. That's a like. Yeah, some dice. Okay. It's hot in the house kind of thing. Let's play spades on the porch. Um, yeah, yeah. Lose the amount of money it would have cost to turn on the AC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you yeah. had an AC. <laughs> yeah, that's true. A lot of people don't. Yeah, uh, yeah. You got but that. You ever you play got dice? That fucking dish. That, oh, hell yeah. Crap, big, big fat yeah, seven, motherfucker. The, ah. Yes, yeah. Sir. Get that. Did Very all, intimidating, did man, to, uh, as a young man, when they start playing yeah. dice in front of you. Oh, yeah. Did you ever used to take the washcloth and throw it in the freezer and then put it over the back of the fan? Oh. <laughs> no. no. Just <laughs> try to get a swamp cooler or something. Oh, yeah. right. uh, okay, yeah. Read like in that biology, cooler, yeah. right, Ken? The healthy yeah. biology and the swamp. Oh, yeah, it's all yeah, about yeah. the biology, baby. Yeah, uh, we were just poor, but, like, uh, yeah. Yep. 
It worked out good, though. <laughs> good old box fan, man. Yeah, being poor will allow you to be outside a lot, so that's cool. Yeah, you know? yeah. We had the we had a clothesline and everything, and the same little little wooden clips. You hang on the clothesline where we clip onto the little fan with the little frozen towel, and whoosh, it cool your ass right off, though. Man, I still use the clothespins in my grow, man. I just now yeah. got uh. My wife got me some orchid clips because they look a lot cooler. <laughs> Somebody's yeah. giving me a hard time. I still use clothespins. Hell yeah. They're alive. great, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, aren't you uh, traveling the, you know, certain areas of Canada? I don't, <laughs> I'm an American. I'm stupid. I was trying to name two like areas where you are. Um, but yeah, th- aren't you traveling around, uh, Ken? Vancouver. Uh, yeah, I'm in uh, North Vancouver today, and then I'm going to be in Hope uh, for the weekend at the Mums Cup. But uh, speaking of sour diesel, Duke, uh, I got New York sour diesel in seed form years ago, and I grew the grew the same strain for two and a half years. And I've got one that's uh, a one year cure and one that's a year and a half. And uh, when I handed it to Kevin Jodry, he he sniffed both, and he really loved the the one with the one year cure instead of the year and a half. Do you think in in uh, the curing that long that it's going to add the extra flavor or that extra half a year cure is that a, a you know a downside? Well, most most stuff that that I grow and depending on people's growth style because like I can grow say like some chem dog and that shit's like notorious for like turning brown like kind of kind of quick you know. Mine, though, like, I keep it cool, dark place. Um, the way I grow, it, it stays nice, man. I feel like right around, like, six months it was, like, like the peak of it, you know? Um, and even, like, keeping it, you know, keeping it put away and everything, that year mark, um, and like I said, you got <laughs> to really be into, like, wanting to keep it around or you're growing, like, a lot of weed. But keeping some weed like that around for a year mark, it still is just as nice. But it, it seems to me like right after that point, like it starts to degrade, you know, even like keeping it, you know, put up and everything correctly. Um, yeah, it seems to start to fall off pretty, pretty harsh after that, you know, and, and like, like all regards. <clears throat> Yeah, that was, uh, uh, I think, what Kevin was smelling, and I've had a few people, they like the smell of the older one, but the, the smell of the younger one has got a little bit more bite, so they're, they're wanting to enjoy that more than the, than the older one. But I consume by uh, pill form, so I grow a lot of weed, but I don't consume a lot of weed, so I've got lots just kicking around at home. I, I People right. don't like um, me for that, no. I, I, got, I got a question for you, man, and like, Apologies to all uh, Canadians, because like for years, you know, the, the joke was, you know, you, you get your uh, your milk in bags. And have you ever encountered a bag of milk in your in your day? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Not generally in the stores, in the restaurants. Uh, they sell the bags of milk. So out of the larger dispensers. But uh, yeah, actually, I used to I was a truck driver and I delivered milk in Calgary, Alberta. And uh, we'd have the big jugs. Uh, like you'd see the blue containers everybody loves to grab. Those would be yeah. full with a bag of, of milk in it. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, it was like that used to be the thing. And then, like, karma got my ass because they, they, they switched it up, man. I got the damn Florence. Bag so, milk up in there. Bro, the BOP is <laughs> doing the bag milk, man. You'd be like <laughs> yeah. tearing off shit and fucking squeezing a bag of milk. <laughs> <laughs> Orange so juice true. and the bag milk. Yeah, shit, they come okay, out well, I'll remove juice. myself from the screen because uh, it's your guys' show. So carry on, guys. Uh, but loving what you're saying, Duke. Yeah. Uh, you got a hell of a lot of information, brother. I love it. Oh man, yeah. man. thanks for thanks for uh, answering that for me. But yeah, karma got my ass. That's a nasty ass bag of milk too. You know that mm-hmm. shit won't good. Mm mm. Mm mm. Yeah, rough shit. They had it in the jail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever get the chocolate milk in the bag? It wasn't too bad. I didn't have the chocolate. I just had the white. 
That sucks. Yeah. I don't need anything. Where it doesn't have to be refrigerated? No, no it's, it's cold. It's refrigerated. Yeah, it's, it's a, just a little, little bag. Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's some thick ass plastic, too. And like, you gotta, gotta go at it. I'm like, uh, yeah. I used to stab that motherfucker with a fork. Just get a little preparation so I could tear it just so. Because you just tear it with your teeth, man. It's all uneven, man. And, and it, mm. it, it get fucked up real quick, man. Shit people real don't want to know about, right? You don't want to know about that life. I, I, it's not like I know <laughs> that life, but I have been locked up in jail, you know, for a few hours. And, uh, you know, so I, 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 you up know, in, uh, I know how confinement you, feels and it's fucked up. <laughs> Were you up in uh were you up in Richmond City? I, well yeah, I was in there in my twenties and I you know, spent a night there, spent a night in Petersburg. I was rowdy, man, when I used to go out when I was young. I, I like to mix it up, man. So uh, you take right, your man, chain, man. dude. <laughs> He's over uh, there taking yeah. people's chains, putting their shoes up, man. No, man. Uh, right. like, Debo style, motherfucker. It's like having a good time, man. <laughs> Are those Jordans? Give me that starter jacket. <laughs> I worked all my summer. Dude, take that shit. I just didn't like bouncers in the club. I did not. Me and bouncers never saw eye to eye. So when I go in there, I would I'd be like find the biggest bouncer and like, all right, we're gonna get it all. If you look at me too much, and then shit, like, all you gotta do. I don't even know if that motherfucker is still open or not. But club club boss, bro. Boss, club boss, thank yeah. you. Copper mine, you copper know. mine, yes, sir. I know you've tobacco been tobacco company, <laughs> tobacco yeah, buddy. company. When you wanted to put a collar on, you want to put a polo yeah. on, go on a tobacco company, yeah, yeah, and a fake Rolex, man. Go find you a sugar mama. And found out she does, she been had when she shows up at the trailer. Thank you. <laughs> She's from out there, Mechanicsville, somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah, nice, man, nice. But um, yeah, it'd be nice to see you, man, in person. I hope they do the uh, skunk con, man. It'd be cool. And a lot of people are looking for you, obviously. I know you're gonna be there. Yeah. Hey, so for people that were asking, that's that's now moved to November. Yeah, I think it was like November 15 and 16, or one of those two days. I think is when Maybe they somebody when they were planning them. it. But you know, don't don't take my word for it. They might, I might be <clears throat> totally wrong, but. Uh, regardless, man, um, you know, I'll, I'll be there, you know, no matter, no matter what. And yeah, they had a date. The field. Exactly. They had a date and it was set and they took money. <laughs> and then all of a sudden out the blue, they gave everybody their money back via PayPal. Yeah. And then they set a new date. So it was November, yeah. but I'll find out and shoot, shoot it to you. Yeah. It's like somewhere around like the, the second week. I remember, I remember that part. And the main reason being they wanted the outdoor guys to be able to have outdoor stunts in there too. So man, it's just gonna be killer, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I know some dudes growing some scholar out there outside too. Fucking that's that's gonna be a good one. (laughs) Nice. I know them assholes gonna be out in the parking lot selling pounds of that shit too (laughs) afterward. (laughs) Coming up. Yes, sir. I just, do you want to kind of go over your new logo and, um, you know, your thought process behind that and that kind of stuff? I know you're, do you mind showing, uh, do you have any of that new, the new get up stuff or still? No, nah, not yet. New drops uh, coming put, soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My boy, uh, my boy, Brad, like we went to school together back in the day and, um, he's a hell of an artist back then, but he, uh, he works at, uh, River City Tattoo. Like he don't do tattoos. Like he he literally he just released a new art book or whatever, and it's called "I Don't Do Tattoos." But anyway, he'll draw you your shit up. Uh, he, he's outstanding. So <clears throat> I just gave him a basic like idea and let him run with it, cause like you know his mind just works different than the rest of the world, you know. So um, yeah, he he really outdid himself. He he really did good. Nice. Yeah, so it seems yeah, like if you went. River City, ask for Brad. Brad Douglas. He gets you straight. And it seems like you went with like you incorporated some of the old school stuff, but maybe have more like some symbolism within this one. Or oh yeah, it's like you got all get... types of hidden shit. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can get lost up in there, man. So that yeah. was his thought process and stuff. 
you kind of just said like, Hey, I like this idea. And then he kind of ran with it. Yeah. I said, let me see some Ed Roth. I want something gritty, you know, something fucking Richmond gritty, Ed Roth, fucking skunks. Let's go. You know, and I showed him the old logo and just let him roll with it. Yeah. He, he's good, man. He's real good. Yeah. His, uh, his Instagram, if you ever want to check out his shit, it's uh, Big Zoidy, B I G Z O I D Y. Yeah, check him out. He's he's got some cool shit. Shit. Yeah, I bet. Uh, I bet Ken could probably throw up that uh, Actually, handle as well. Oh yeah, right on, man. I, oh yeah. Good. No, you'll have to do it yourself. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I got it. Yeah. I forgot he, he sent me a sticker. Nice, big Zordy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I said, you need some, you need some ink or whatever. Go over to River City Tattoo. It's off the Boulevard in Richmond. Then afterwards, get you some Buzz and Ned's uh, barbecue. That's just good. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I like that, man. Like a good artist, I love how you can just tell them, like with words, because I, you know, we can't draw. I can't, so I tell them with words, and then when they put that shit down, it's just, it's just special. It's like our guy. Um, shout out, uh, B Rob, Designer Digital. He's the guy that does a lot of our logos. But that's 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 well, and guy. he does it hit after hit. You know, like yeah. there was somebody in the yeah. reptile game that used them, I guess, because of us, and they were extremely pleased. So, yeah, shout well, out to everybody that does solid work. Um, I think this mm-hmm. it's probably the same way Duke, uh, this gentleman, like, you know, there's no template for his, the way he does his style. So he actually draws it yeah. out. Yeah. Artists are <clears throat> they're different, man. Like their, their brains are wired up a little different and like, and God bless them, you know, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just really cool to like, like you said, just words even, you know, and, and then to see what they come up with. It's, it's mind blowing to me. So do you mind sharing like, so, you know, the thought process with the new logo and moving forward, it seems like you have a lot of that behind the scenes. I'm sure you'll reveal that in time. Uh, But I want the community to know that it seems like, man, you've really taken the time to think this through and your branding and your marketing is now like, uh, you know, it's tip top, man. It's, it's first class. And I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool to see that you put it, the time and effort. I'm sure you've had a lot of time to think about the way that you want to accomplish things in life. Um, so I want to talk about some of those things and some of the things, the good things that are going on with you. Um, not only with the seeds and bringing in that, but you had briefly mentioned that you're working with Jeremy from build a soil uh, and he's creating yeah. kind of your own, um, you know, I don't know exactly how he words it, but it's kind of like, he seems like he, <coughs> he works with like the legends of the industry or the legends of grow or something. There's some kind of verbiage yeah. like that. And he seems like he's working with you on the same level with those other individuals of now coming out with your own soil. So I was hoping we could kind of dive deeper into to that and what, you know, what you hope to achieve with that with the community. And if you mind sharing certain aspects of what makes your soil a little oh, yeah. bit different than everybody else's. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, it, the idea it struck me probably in like, Ooh, late 2018, because, you know, everybody's got their own, their own style, right? And, you know, if I grow weed my way versus another guy growing their way, another gal grows her way, and, you know, we got all these different styles, and, and we'll just take environment, like, out, out the window, we'll just say, like, we're, we're all, like, you know, focused on our environment, Temperature, humidities are good. Airflow is good. Everything's cool. But somebody's growing in uh, Peter Sots, you know, I'm growing in my soil and my little input. Somebody else is doing a cocoa with some like Lucas formula, whatever. Like, you know, you you can. And this is without the harvest, the dry and the cure part, you know, all that separate as well. But just the grow itself, you know, that's a big X factor, um, especially you're you're putting seeds out in the market and you're giving them expectations on what they can expect as far as a yield right um smell flavor and all these things um 
people, you know, that's that's the biggest X factor of them all. You know, I don't know what medium they're going to grow in. I don't know if they're a first time grower um, or, you know, long, long time grower. Right. So I thought like it would be because, you know, I like my soil and I get it like people do their do their synthetics and like I ain't going to hate on them at all. But I can at least say like, hey, if you can have the same environmentals as I do and we both grow in the same medium and we were both doing the same inputs, our, our results should be very, very similar, you know. Um, so that was number one. And number two was, you know, I'd see a lot of people getting like Fox Farm soil um, and they get turned off, you know, because like, oh, yeah, I'm doing my soil thing. But, you know, all soils aren't, aren't created equal, you know. And then some people get confused. They buy like a mix that's meant for like, starting up some seeds and clones and they're in there blooming it with water only <laughs> you know what i mean and i've seen other people mix up some gnarly old super soil and they're in there just feeding it to death you know like they're, they're not you know they're it's almost like information overload and people over complicate and all these other factors like so i thought hey if i can get my mix which is like done me right for fucking ever it's minimal work minimal input you don't have to throw it out like it's a cheaper way to grow great results and everything from quality quantity the, the whole works that would be really awesome so i talked to jeremy back in the day and i was supposed to talk to him at that that, that last Nintendo expo i saw you at brian and uh you know like the the man was uh, fixing to be after my ass so i had to cut cut it short so when that show was over i was out the door so i didn't get to talk to him further and then when I was uh, when I was away, you know, you got lots of time, you know, so make best use of your time, um, you know, plan and, you know, get things, you know, figured out, think of the, the different ways of doing stuff. And I was like, yeah, it's definitely something that needs to be done. So I, uh, I wrote him, uh, I wrote him a letter and uh, then he wrote me a letter back and he was like, dude, yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. And he, that's what he said. He's like, I'm working with uh other people in the industry and we have this like legend series you know the way they're doing you know different inputs and this and that he's like dude that would be perfect and i was like cool because like you know a lot of people you know it's weird right because like i can take a picture and it looks all good and shit but like yeah i assure you all like uh, you know i got a real real good weed man <laughs> it, it is it is on point um and you know they all know that too so when I get home, you know, I'm writing it all out like, hey, here's here's the mix, you know, based on, you know, a cubic yard. <clears throat> this is what what, you know, I, I, I got in there per weight, you know, and uh, per amount. And I was like, yeah, like, see, see what we can do with this. He's like, all right, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up. Right. And then we're going to um, send it to a lab. And we're, we're going to see what, what's going on with it, with the levels. I was like, yeah, because I know it's always done me right. I've never had a lab analysis done on it because I just, just never have. So he does it, and he's like, yeah, I'm blown away. He's like, yeah, it's like really, really on point for like never, you know, tweaking anything through labs and whatnot. I was like, yeah, that's great, great to fucking hear. So then we make a few minor adjustments to get it just right, and then uh, we, you know, we get a shot off for another lab comes back results exactly where he's where he's wanting to see it so we're looking at that i'm like yeah so now you gotta you know mix a batch up so he mixed up uh two cubic yards of it for me sent it out and then that's that's what you know doing our thing in that right now right so giving it like a good a good run run out the door because like there was one thing that we you know decided to like switch up was instead of uh, going with the blood meal, switching it up to a soy amino, because like that's a, well, one, like I was going to input that anyway, but two, it's also like a fast, good uh, nitrogen source, you know, right off the bat. So, you know, very, very minute um, change, but, you know, still a change nonetheless. So you got to check that out. But, you know, like we're, we're making sure like the soil's dose of molybdenum 
uh, you know, boron and a few other things that you know you don't typically see, you know, um, talked about and things that I felt were like kind of kind of important to me when I was you know really refining my mix years ago, um, and also like trying to get that um, soil pH to be like I said around that six four six five you know versus like a pH neutral and everything like that was also pretty pretty big to me as well. So if if I'm brand new to this system, um, is this, you know, is it, you know, I'm adding just a few amendments. Is this a water only where it's dialed in, uh, especially for, for the beginner, or is this a more advanced uh, soil system? I'd say like an intermediate, like <clears throat> it'd be something like I am going to have a couple of plants where I just hit it with water only. I just, I don't know. I, I just never really recommend that like because I don't really do a whole lot of inputs you know but the way I go about it it's kind of how the cocoa or the synthetic guys looking you know like a, a week to week thing because there's certain things in that soil that aren't in my soil like alfalfa and kelp like that's something that like I want that in my control as an input you know so um, I'm more in like a like a week to week thing, but it's not really a whole lot. You're talking um, like a little alfalfa kelp deal at the at the very beginning. Um, little earthworm casting back one or two, maybe a little Epsom salt or you know however you want to do your magnesium sulfate, um, and then that's you know that's kind of kind of about it. It's not not like a big long list of things to you know, add in for your input. So, you know, like I said, you could do probably the water only, but, you know, I'd recommend just put a little, little extra effort in and, you know, get that extra, extra yield and extra, extra smell and all that out of it. And I think too, like if someone wants to go with your system, hand watering, I think is paramount. Even if you eventually want to move on to something else, some of those other systems, can cause dramatic, um, almost, almost like catastrophic, uh, uh, levels of like flooding, not only in the room, but the soil, if you don't understand how it works or it's not dialed in correctly. So I think, um, you know, having somebody like you, man, to, to, to have a soil system. And then if you could just tweak that again, real slowly, uh, for your environment, uh, again, this might be something where a lot more people are going to find success Duke. So, you know, hats off to you and uh, the Build a Soil platform for, you know, kind of putting out products that, uh, you know, the the beginner or maybe the, the intermediate farmer can, um, you know, see immediate results with uh, by just putting a little more time and effort uh, into the understanding their soil systems and where the inputs that are in those soil systems are coming from. Yeah, man. And like <clears throat> uh, Build a Soil and Rootwise, um they're, they're just such awesome people. Um, and uh, Dragonfly Earth Medicine, too. Because, you know, there's certain things, like, you know, we could just simplify it and be like, have a little kelp, a little alfalfa do it. If you want to take it up another level, you know, you could get some um, some radiant green from Dragonfly, brew that up versus that. You know, like, there's certain levels to it. But overall, at the, at the end of it, it's a pretty pretty damn simple and you know affordable way to uh to do your thing and it'll give people good success because i don't i don't want to see people like deterred away from organic growing because they got the shit all fucked up you know feeding alfalfa to the end or all the hundreds of other other things that they run into um i want to see people have something affordable i want to see people have something simple enough that a beginner can follow and i want to see people smiling and happy and you know having those good results and you know be stoked about growing weed and like make weed fucking fun again you know and not like such a laborious thing where you're having to buy all this shit and the, you know and do all this fucking work like it's supposed to be a hobby and like fun and like rewarding and you know good medicine for people like you know it's like see people get get back to get back to that a little bit a little bit more you know so i think uh i think it's gonna be i think it's gonna be pretty cool man and 
I'm going to record like a uh, grow by the numbers, you know, in that in that soil from, you know, clone and seed start and all the way through uh, the veg and the bloom and the, you know, the, the chop and the, the hang, the dry, the trim, you know, the extended dry, and the, the cure and everything. And, you know, try to you know, spread that, you know, knowledge along, you know, because it goes... A lot of ways to skin the cat, but, you know, I just want to show people, like, this is how I'm skinning my cat. <laughs> you know, you might take one thing out of it, the whole thing might be good for you, whatever, but at least for new people, I would say, like, just stick to these basic things, <clears throat> and you'll, you'll, get a, you'll get a great result. And then if you want to add on to that, at least then you'll have a baseline, right? So if you do add something that shit gets better, hey, great. If it gets worse, then at least you got that baseline of success and say, hey, that, that didn't work. So are they going to um, are you you guys going to run this? I know you're running it now. After you run it, is that when it'll release to the public? Yeah, because Jeremy, he's going to run some, too. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm running it uh, in a couple of tents and in a, in a big room, too. So getting some big, uh, big hoss type plants, plus some tent size plants and everything and you know, just making, just making sure, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, and I'm growing all my, like, old usual suspects, too, so, you know, I got, like, a metric of, like, all right, I know what this does, I know what my returns are like, I know what we're smelling like, and yada, yada, you know, so after it's all said and done, I have a metric, like, we're, we're still in the same ballpark, right, or, you know, hey, maybe even, maybe even a little bit better, right? But, you know, I don't, you know, if it, it can't be worse. <laughs> and if for whatever reason I get what, and then, you know, man, back to the drawing board, man. You know. Yeah, I commend you all for that part of it, man. Because so many people, like, they could easily just slap the DD on there, double D, right. Duke Diamond, and yeah. start popping them off, man. But I, that's much more respect because anything could be wrong. One of your ingredients could have been a little off. Something could have you know, not been quite perfect. And exactly. For you guys to do this, right. man, it makes a lot a lot more business sense because, you know, no yeah. need to rush, try to get that money too quick when uh -uh. You know, it could be bad money early. Exactly, man. And, like, the, the end goal is, like, happy people with good results and, like, you know, doing their thing, you know. It's not it's not the money. Like, yeah, money's cool. Like, if I can make a little cheddar to spread on this poor cracker, hey, man. I'm cool with that. Like, you know, I, I got bills to pay like the next man, but it ain't like, you know, strictly, you know, just about the, about the money, you know, it's, it's, you know, I want to, want to see people doing good. And, you know, if I'm, if I'm growing out, you know, packs of my stuff in the same exact soil, you know, we should be, we should be sharing those, uh, those good times, even though you might be in Australia or Ireland and South Africa, Thailand, Mexico, might be in Virginia, in Colorado, where, wherever, you know, we should be able to, you know, share in that. And that's, that's pretty cool. And, you know, like you said, money's, money's whatever. Like, I go go back to doing instrumentation or something for some, some, some big dollars if I want. Or go to one of these trade shows and stick up some of these fucking industry jack-offs, whatever. Be like, strip, motherfucker. Let me get that, you know. But, you know, it ain't about that. No, no. No, it's about doing it the right way, man. Like I was telling somebody that the other day, <laughs> you know, they we were just talking in, in about sales and stuff like that. And it's not all, it's not always about the money. You know, it's about that quality. Get that good quality out and the money's going to come to you. You know, hand over fist. Yeah, man, I want to see people, like I said, growing, growing their own, uh, whether you know, it's just a recreational thing. Like to me, really, I, I consider all of it medicinal because like, yeah, you might not be all fucked up, but. You know what I mean? Like being in a good headspace and being happy, that, that is medicine, you know what I mean? Especially nowadays. So, But I want to see people doing good and being successful and having fun and, you know, growing their own because uh, that's something good, you know, be self-sufficient, you know, grow your own fruits, vegetables, do it, do it all, you know. It's, it's a good way to be. Save money, get better quality, and it's good. You know? Better yeah, health. Exactly. Just grow. Yeah, man. Exactly. Dr. Steve Brule said, for your health. No doubt. All right. Well, you want to kind of, I bet there's going to be a lot more questions. Um, and then I got, I can probably like add some questions to this as well. Ken, are you there? 
Yeah, let's run through some. For, yeah. uh, I am here, uh, but London's been getting me stoned, so I don't know how well I'm going to do today, you know. So. <laughs> look at it. You, you actually look different since the beginning. <laughs> That's I'm good, man. I'm glad you're smoking like that. Okay. Well, good. Chris keeps telling me I got to smoke more. So, you know, London's just been helping out. <laughs> so, Duke, That's brother, good. what is your favorite strain? Well, I can never answer the one favorite one because I got so many different ones for different, different things. You know what I mean? Um, so, I'll start with... Um, I'll start with some daytime, like getting the getting the day started. Um, train wreck <laughs> it was always a really awesome one for getting the day started. Um, I did this one, uh, Genius Haze, back in the day. Like that was like a, a go-to. Um, that shit really kept me kept me going. Um, if I'm looking to start feeling a little bit a little bit weird and shit, like. Uh, like a good haze or uh, like super silver haze, even um, those were those were always good. Like it's mid-day. nostalgia, man. That is yeah, nostalgia. Man. Those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, and like they they always hit the spot for me. Um, midday. Um, I mean, we'll we'll just say like a little lunch break head change, you know, and you gotta get back to work type deal. Um, I don't know, man. Like I was, I was always partial, like NL NL Skunk. Um, I had an old C ninety nine cut that I used to like. There was a uh, Subcool's old uh, Apollo thirteen that that particular coin right there. That was a nice go to. Uh, later in the evening, man. Like you know, headband OGs. Um, they always, always, always kind of kind of hit the spot and then like a lot of my own work and start to come into into play there <laughs> um and just because a lot of a lot of the shit that i had was to more or less like chill out chill out you know uh relax and everything and then go on into yeah, the, to the night yeah. yeah yeah exactly man so um yeah so <laughs> that's yeah, a lot of people are like, yeah, where's your sativas? I was like, shit, when I worked for Brothers Grimm, man, I'd sativa it out, you know. But, um, yeah, a lot of my shit was, like, for anti-anxiety, PTSD, and uh, good narcotic punch stuff to put you put you down, put you to sleep, you know, things like that. So, yeah, hash plants and chem and chem hybrids and stuff like that always pretty much did the uh, did the trick for me. Well, yeah, and you're you're searching for that time of day when you need that particular strain to cause this effect because that's the pain I'm feeling or that's the anxiety, and that's that's fantastic. And searching for those strains is part of the fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. Like you'll you'll find out what works works best for you, and um, yeah, you know, like when you find those those ones, you know, like that's that's the good indicator. You know, your body's not gonna lie to you, so. <laughs> You know, you're going to like that and you want to keep those clones, you know, and then that's how you start to amass, uh, you know, a little mother collection of, you know, things that that work for you, you know, for yeah. maybe different different times of day. And me personally, I would have like multiple things for that time of day. So one day I might be starting off like this and then the next day I start off a different one and then the next day and then I rotate so I don't get that burnout, you know, all smoking one thing. Yeah, exactly. And I kind of all I've got for, that I've grown is the sour diesel, and I can't mm. smoke anything uh, because I've got a bad throat that isn't growing in biological uh, situation. The the salts kill me. So yeah, I don't get really that stoned off of my own stuff anymore because that's all I ever consume, right? Yeah, and if you if you switch up that gene pool, you know, um, you'll you'll just notice you'll get like high school high again. Because you're, I would you're love that. Out of that room. Yeah, I would yeah, love man. that. I, I, I'm a, a thousand fifty milligrams a, a day, so it takes something pretty special to to get me high at all. I've given you a ton of variety. You, it does take. I've given him a ton of variety. I'm not coming on screen because I have no shirt on. It'd be weird. Um, nah, do it. it. Do I it. appreciate it. Uh, 
I, so I we we were at the Unicorn Cup. We probably went through about thirty different varieties in flower form, at least, and about twelve or fourteen different varieties, at least of of um, rosins and different flavor profiles. And one thing that I noticed with Kennedy leans on those heavy terpenoline gas, heavy sedative dominant ones. And those are usually where I see him have the most success with dealing with his own personal pain and dealing with that type of thing. Like when I see him kick one of those, I always see a positive response, but there isn't, there, there isn't a lot that actually gets, gets some good. So I mean, I'm always excited when I find something that he's like, damn, that's fine. No shirt. Oh, London's yeah. no shirt. Jesus. Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh yeah. They may have that super chat thing. They might start throwing dollars at you, man. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, man boobs, London. That's what Jeff's saying. But anyway, we'll, <laughs> we'll go to the next question. Anyway, uh, does Duke know anything about Julius going around Northeast in mid two thousands tasted like an orange Julius from the mall man i don't but during uh during that time frame your big oranges would have been you know somebody growing uh calio oh oh eric 77 calio or uh a hybrid of um let's see here they say two what was the years 2004 to five early two thousand. yeah Let's see, because Jilly Bean came around in like late 04, I believe. So, you know, something off of that maybe. But I would suspect uh, it was probably somebody rocking out that old Calio. Okay, cool. So, uh, and that is the California orange bud, is how it was first. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the jelly beans nostalgic. That's, uh, yeah. That takes you back, too. That is old school. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And see, I got to go back into the 80s for anything that tastes like what I used to smoke because then I quit for 20 years. So I got to go back to Thai Stick and, um, you know, the old strains Rock from back then. Gold. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the Thai Stick dipped in fucking opium and shit. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's why yeah. they don't hit the same for you, buddy. Angel dust, you know, a little bit of angel <laughs> dust in the bad weed. Hey, man, this is premium stuff now, man. Some, some love boat. Yeah, uh, Duke, love where boat. is the Can't sour? More. Oh, sorry, Marco, what'd you say, Brian? No, love boat. That was a fucking formaldehyde. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and mom and fluid. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, the sour D used to come to Richard. Uh, Richmond, you know, where's it been? Or Richmond, sorry. Yeah. Well, I got locked up in 07, so there's was probably a drought from then uh, then on pretty heavy. <laughs> we were blowing yeah, that I shit up think. all over the place. Yeah. 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 So let's see. Duke, I'm smoking on the Thunder Hole this morning. My grow has already oh, yeah. benefited from your advice on Kelp and Elf Alpha. When is the book release? <laughs> Man, as soon as I get, as soon as I get some more time, like I haven't had time since I was locked up, like writing and shit. You got lots of time when you're on the inside. You get out and you got you're busy again. Yeah, especially catching up for two years. You know, like there's a lot of, a lot of shit to do. <laughs> oh, I guess, eh? So, what's your favorite Dominion strain? Um, depends. Once again, like what, what for? Um, I would say like for my, like my anxiety and chilling, uh, screaming Eagle, purple Dahlia were like really good for that on my not like going to sleep, like, but you know, chilling, but definitely stoned as shit. Um, the hoodoo and the skunk band were, were definitely up there. Then I started to kind of dwindle into the, the more heavy, uh, the narcotic type type weeds, you know. So okay, um, yeah, yeah. Dominion G it was a was a hell of a hell of a strong one. The burnout was pretty pretty damn strong too. Um, the Beefcake D used to slump me kind of in between the two, you know. Um, there was there's man too too many to list because <laughs> like I said, I always keep like a rotation, you know, so I don't 
I don't catch yeah. that burnout. Yeah. Well, if you're if you're like a husband wife team and you're growing, I think that purple dahlia is is uh, something that you should. Do you still are you still uh, producing that one or is that one retired? No, nah, no, nah, that one's uh, that one's retired off, but. Um, I do have something in the works up in that ante a little, little bit more. Cause everything like, <laughs> that one was beautiful. Dude. Work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty shit too. I can smell the flavor. The, the stone on it was just out, outstanding. Sounds good. Cause when you're farming, yeah. you got to remember too, who are you farming for? Like you can't always mm -hmm. be farming for yourself if you're in the commercial aspect. So right. to have something that kind of is stony, but also really is that has that like purpleness to it and also has yeah. that glitter and shine, you know, mm -hmm. that's the average person is going to look at that and want to look at the purple one. I, I promise mm -hmm. you if they've never seen that before. So it's just like it's more eyeballs on your product as well. So remember, yeah. you know, your genetics matter with this kind of stuff. And that's why we go out of our way to, to have people that are, you know, legendary individuals with with understand how to do this stuff so that you guys can take the time you know you put three hours into us each and every week uh so that you can minimize probably months and years of, of just heartache or growing subpar genetics that are maybe a little too hyped uh that you know nobody really talks about it I, I had a friend that was talking duke that was kind of like you know it's the headline you know some of these breeders are the headline so everybody's reading the headline and then in the you know page seven a few weeks later they should be coming out being like oh man everything herm and when they do come out with that nobody reads that headline anymore because it's buried in a bunch of other stuff so do you feel like that's a pretty good analogy and it, it does kind of seem like if you're not paying attention you can get uh, a bamboozled pretty easily that and things move so fast you know um like i said they're looking to put the next best thing in front of you by the time it's grown out, they've already had like another drop or two in between. And yeah, it's just, it's like a never ending cycle. And it might not be necessarily the same place, you know, it's just another person riding another wave or riding on the same person's wave. So it's just nonstop, nonstop. And eventually like, you know, they're only gonna pull that off like, you know, once, maybe twice with the same people. And then they're looking to kind of drift away. but as things are like continuing to grow and legalization becomes, you know, it's growing more and more, um, you get more and more new people and, um, you know, they're, they're fresh, fresh fish, man, ready to, ready to get got. So that's what I'm saying. Like if you're new or you got somebody else looking, you know, to, to start with you or whatever, always give them, give them that advice, you know, when they're looking to, to grow something new, um, tell them to do their homework. Make sure they're testing the shit out, at least. <laughs> um, the the thing is, with the newest of the new, like you said, by the time that next headline comes out, there's already been a bunch more drops in between. So it's it's this fresh newest of the new. There are there aren't any reports on other people growing it, right? So you don't have that input. But at minimum, at least they should be able to, um, you know show like hey you know they've been growing it <clears throat> running it through the numbers and um you know it's something something quality at the at the end of it and maybe you know throwing those tidbits out there saying like yeah it's like it's hella sensitive to, to overfeeding you know what i mean so you know if you're growing this way you know keep your keep your feeds like this you know um otherwise your good times are ruined you know um it's always good to have that data data for the grower yeah i think behind the the curtain sometimes when people are like oh yeah this has been tested uh you know if, if i don't i don't know how to word this the right way but sometimes it's not it's it's not tested by individuals that are maybe even newer to, to growing and stuff like it's like yeah people have grown it but it wasn't necessarily like how do you know it's its full genetic profile and i think there's some breeders that that are okay with that. It's like, they just want to put out, you know, 30 different varieties every quarter, yeah. or however they view, view it. Um, and they're, and they're so focused on the different varieties, the steady genetics for the average person. Um, it seems like some guys just don't really give a fuck about that. And it's, it's sad to see because 
I, I don't know, man. I, sh- I think I should let somebody, because I don't want to say the, the wrong thing here, but the, the focus should be really on putting out your work. Like if you're, if you're, if that's your, this is your art form, then your artwork should be fire. You should be something that you're proud of. And right. um, Every not time. everybody views yeah. it that way. Like my name's got to be on it. And like my name is like, it's worth something, you know? So it just tells me like the name ain't shit. You know what I mean? And they just, they're willing to swap that out for a quick buck and Hey, you know, they, they got their bills to pay or whatever. I ain't paying them so they can do them, but you know, it don't, it don't last for long. You know, the, the, you'll see them, they come and they go all, all the time. You know, it's the so Instagram you weed. Yeah. Yeah. It's quick. It's up. It's down. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, like purple you know, punch would be a good or, example of, when he's saying yeah. like Instagram weed, right? Like yeah. you're, no one smoked it yet, but everybody's on the hype train because of the way I looked, I guess. Uh, but it was purple, no punch, you know, it was purple yeah. sub punch. Right. And, and like a good example would be like, let's say you were, you know, you're doing your Instagram thing. You see a guy, he's like, oh yeah, I got this purple punch clone. It's January. Right. And then the dude's got a, a seed drop in May. From purple punch selling it i mean you, you do the math like he had enough time to veg that clone up hit it with some pollen half ass dry some seeds out put them in packs and and start selling them that tells you right there like hey like you know that that math don't add up <laughs> that actually like the, like doing those practices actually hurt our industry and our community way worse than people realize because yeah. when you put out the genetics to that, that hasn't been tested and it gets in the hands of people that aren't experienced, right? They're going to grow that, you know, this is breeder X's, you know, seed, right? They're going to grow that. And then the hype's going to be behind it. And then they're going to get ahead of themselves. You know, they're going right. to think that just because that name's tagged onto it, um, they can go ahead and work it or, or sell a clone or, and if they sell that clone and maybe someone takes that and now breeds with it, now the genetics aren't stable. So you kind of could be set back in your in your breeding program if you add some genetics like that to your stuff. So, um, you know, that's why I just feel like, man, don't put the money over quality, you know, and that goes for each stage of this. That's going to make our whole industry stronger, you know. Yeah. And at the end of it, like somebody might not even like realize like, it wasn't it wasn't them because like you see it go both ways like i've seen people complain about you know genetics but they're just total shit growers you know i've seen it go that way and i've seen people do nothing wrong and end up let's say with the whole whole pack of herms and everything and don't even realize that you know it wasn't something they've done i've seen both ends of the spectrum everything in between and um you know like the new people like i said it might deter them away from growing right and that you know uh, that's not cool either um but yeah like it, it can put a it can definitely put a put a bad bad rap out there for sure like they used to say it best it's like a it's a cd industry you know and uh people they're, they're looking to get paid you know versus you know quality and being out there for the for the long haul by running yeah. running a you know respectable taking pride business. in your work you know yeah. that's what you do and that's what a lot of the breeders are doing is taking pride but yeah there's some guys that are more scam artists than grower and they're just in it for the money and that's that's the hard part of the business yeah and it, it's so prevalent you know um you know it, it's just hard to weed through it all because the, the problem is you'll see some of the newer cats that are doing their thing and just now coming out and they are putting in the work and they are doing a good job, but they're, 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 their whole thing is ruined by the other 10 guys that aren't. They're fly by night seed company. They're fucking people's gardens up and it ruins it for that other new person, you know. So then people only stick to, um, you know, places that have been in business for like a long time and have that good track record, you know. Um, it's kind of it's kind of sad in in that regard, but. You know, once again, you know, just do do the homework on it and, you know, look at, you know, there might be a new person, but just look at what they're doing, you know. Um, you know, if they're in there, you know, doing their thing and 
you know, the testing everything out and, 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 you know, putting the, putting the info out there and all like that, that's a good thing. You, do you see it very often? No, no, you don't, but sometimes you do. And uh, it'd be a damn shame if people overlook somebody who's, who's newer into, into doing their thing. They might've been growing for 30 years and maybe even doing their own little, you know, breeding, you know, just, just for their own, own well-being, and now they're, you know, opening up to, to a public, um, you know, so, yeah, you know, you just got to kind of take it case by case, and, and really, uh, really look at, look at what's going on. Yeah, exactly, because each person is different, each person has a different attitude, and it's the attitude that really makes the breeder, when it comes down to it, it's that end game that they have, but Duke, are you still going to be working uh, with Soulfire Gardens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, right now we're just at a, um, it's just like at a at a catch up type phase, you know, because being away for a couple years, um, I've always tried to keep things a couple <laughs> couple years ahead. So that's that's definitely going to help me out, but still playing. Uh, a little bit of catch up and then I'm going to start getting with everybody and, um, making some, making some cool, cool little deals with, with other, uh, other friends and everything. I think everybody I really, really be happy about. Oh, right on. That kind of bleeds into this question. Uh, is the diamond blend out? No, uh, uh-uh. not yet. Not until I give it the, uh, the two, the two thumbs up, you know, it's, uh, like I said, it's gotta, gotta do it said it was like it's a very small change right but it is it is a change and even if i didn't make any any changes to the old the old recipe like at all i would still run through it because you know i love jeremy and i know like he's a straight up he's an awesome guy but i did not have a shovel and a rake you know mixing everything and doing it you know so i just you know it's just how I am. I gotta, I gotta test everything and make sure everybody's gonna be, be happy with it, you know. So, soon as, uh, soon as I get a run through and everything, and everything's cool, then yeah, we, we'll let it roll. All right, on man. That's gonna. Everybody's gonna be looking forward to that. So somebody was asking uh, when you're coming to Maine. Cheddar Bob's living in Maine now. He wants you to come visit. Oh, that's what's up, man. I hope the, uh, the gunshot wound is healed up good huh. i remember that movie yep yeah, yeah. anyway yeah. um it, it'd be after uh it'd be after i'm off of paper uh which would be um like right around new year's and then i'm gonna wait for y'all to thaw out a little bit and then uh yeah. come up come up see how it gets cold as a motherfucker up there i used to hang around east corinth and banger and all that back in the day and I'm from northern Canada, so Maine is nice and toasty, warm in the wintertime compared to here. Oh, man. Shoo, Lord, man. Don't ever yeah. go to Virginia in the summer, buddy. You'll melt. Oh, exactly, right? So let's see. Cracker Jack, Troll Station, a good – okay, I think I think I put that in and I wasn't supposed to, so we'll get rid of that. Um, Fruity Pebbles. Can we talk about Fruity Pebble OG? That was from a buddy obsolete back in the day. Um, I don't know if he still works with it or not, but check out uh, his company. It was called Franchise Genetics. Um, check them out. Um, it's uh, obsolete is the name. I, I forgot his Instagram, man. But it's like O B S O U L E E T. Um, okay. but yeah, yeah. Check him out and ask, uh, ask him what's up. He, he might still be doing stuff with it too. He does. He does nice, nice work. All right on. So then people are wondering, um, some of us avoid Instagram. When is your website and forum dropping? So instead of the forum, um, we set up a discord, right? And it's very forum like. And also, like, there's a um, like a voice chat feature, and like we do we do a thing every uh, every Friday night, me and an old friend of mine, and um, everybody just kind of gets in there 
and just shoots the shit. Like it's a lot of a lot of good times. Um, got a lot of a lot of cool people. Um, people that used to be on forums way back that hate Instagram and shit. They even hate the forums now, and they're up in there. Um, there's a wealth of knowledge in there from people that just go under weird little aliases, so people don't hound them for clones and shit like that. But uh, we do a Friday night seed giveaway and everything else. Um, if you were to go on my YouTube channel or my Instagram, so on the Instagram, on that main header page, there's a little link. It says link tree. If you click on the link tree, that's going to um, give you a link to the Discord uh, or to the YouTube channel. Uh, websites coming up ish, you know, soon. But uh, I highly recommend the Discord. I think y'all would have a real good time. It's a real laid back community of people. It's my house too, so you know if anybody's up in there on some bullshit or some dickhead shit, man, they they get booted the fuck out real quick. Like so, good. it's all cool, laid back people. It's just lots of good sharing information. Um, I think think everybody will really really like it. You know. Um, just the only thing is, like, when you, 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 you make a Discord account and you, you click that link, you know, that puts you in the server, uh, it'll take you to a little verify channel. I throw some people off, but um, it, is just say, it just says, like, the rules, you know. It's like no drama, no politics, no annoying shit. If you're cool with that, there's a, um, a little thumbs up, little icon, and you just click that, and boom. And then you're, you're verified and you run them up. That's it. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I haven't been on Discord yet. I know lots of people are talking about it. I just uh I'm on too much social media as is most <laughs> most yeah. days for what I figure anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nice, man. Like it's easier to keep up with people, messages and everything, and also all like how a forum would be like a lot of different topics, you know, and stuff, you know, more specifically to what you're what you're looking to looking to do so like i said everything from auctions and giveaways and seed drops of the whole works you know and it's just it's just good times and good people you know oh and that's what makes it all the difference is those good people that are there too so rusty nails is asking about canopy management yeah so what what you're looking for all right let me see how to <clears throat> how to how to lump this up here. Um, so height is is definitely a, a, a big part of it. Um, and assuming, like I said, you can keep temperature and humidity good in this in this area and the light intensity on this canopy. All right. Now, as far as the management of the canopy itself, whether you're using um, like a netting, you know, like uh, you're, you're doing a uh, like a scrog, scrog netting. Know? Yep. If you're doing that, or maybe you're doing uh, staking stuff like that. Um, that when we were talking about seeing the best shape of of a plant, right? So you know, in the traditional shape, you know, we had a nice, you know, nice cola or whatever that grew up. Um, we top it, you know, on the clone run, and then we have like a multi-top deal, on, you know, on another clone. Um, and we see that like whether it was topped or multi-topped, like it was the same big cola, but times 10 or whatever. So assuming we can do that, um, the idea is trying to keep everything like on the, on the you know, give or take, because it's hard to get them, you know, exactly <laughs> perfect and level but keeping everybody at the at the same height and what that might involve you doing is a little bit of a little bit of stem crushing and stuff to hold something back so everything else catches up <clears throat> or you can do like low stress training where you take uh you know a, a piece of uh like you know you could use um string you know, cord so anything many things. yeah um taking like a little loop you know you don't want to tie like you know directly around the branch but a little loop to where you can pull down on it and go down like if you got a plastic pot drill a little hole in it um if you got a smart pot poke a hole in it and you can take that string and take it down to there and then you know pull pull back on that string till you get it where you want it and then 
run it through one time and tie a square knot and done. And then it'll, you know, come back up. And you can play around with different, you know, different configurations to, you know, fill in that, that, that square footage, that space that you're looking to fill in, whether it's one big plan or multiple ones, you know. Um, and then, you know, defoliating correctly um, and, and getting, you know, those spaces in between so you're getting good light penetration and everything and a nice, you know, respectably even uh, canopy. You know, that's, that's basically what you're looking for. Yeah, I've seen guys do it with scrog and uh, with stakes. <laughs> and I did one, uh, she was eight foot by eight foot, eight foot tall, and I just kept bending her out so that the center could come up into the light and man what a lot of nice colas sea yeah, green man. yeah that's it man yeah, yeah. you want to just yeah fill that fill that space in as as good as you can and uh just make sure that you got good air circulation you know you don't want to get too too crazy thick but you know as long as you got some air movement going through there you'll you'll be uh you'll be good to go well, and you mentioned uh, on your defoliation, I know I was taking anything that was pointing down, I was taking that off so that it was just the stuff that was up towards the light that could come up. Is that how you were doing it as well? Um, I do I do that, but I like to leave my outward facing fans on and stuff that faces like inward, you know, that kind of overlap and block that light from, you know, the center of the plant coming down. Um, I like to remove those inward inward facing ones. And I typically like to do it like just prior to uh, bloom by about a week. That way, when I hit my stretch, a lot of those little small node sites get dominance from that fan leaf being gone. And then when the stretch happens, they'll they'll take off and kind of fill in those those blank spaces in between all those colas, you know. Well, yeah, and then you got a complete canopy. I see Brian's itching, yeah. brother. You want to say something, Brian? Oh no, we got a. <clears throat> Ryan and I are quietly over here with uh, IT problems where I got to fix it every, every like uh, four minutes or so, it seems like. So I was just trying <laughs> okay. to fix that stuff. But I did right. want to uh, give the give the mic real quick to Ryan. Um, in my opinion, man, he's Duke, he's kind of representing, and a lot of people are out there where, uh, you know, a, a younger individual that understands farming, making his own inputs, thanks, to, you know, in part, thanks to Marco, the show, all, all of those things. Uh, but moving forward, you know, he's also washing his own stuff and learning how to do that and talking to individuals. So I wanted to let him kind of have the mic for a moment to be able to ask you a few questions. Yeah. What's up, Duke? Um, I What's was just up, curious, man? Uh, what are you going to do for re-amending with that soil that you got? Um, are you going to test and have like a pack, like a little re-amendment pack, or is that a one-time soil? What do you got going for that? Well, what I what I used to do, um, I said I was always just kind of kind of eyeballing, right? But you know that's that's like for me personally, you know. Yeah. Now that it's going to be a thing that's going to be out there for a public, um, I want to take that to a to a lab and you know actually understand exactly what's going on at certain certain cycles over the year, and you know. Get like like I said something that's more of a dialed in, you know, re amendment pack where you would top dress it, and then um, you know maybe a little little earthworm cast in bokashi over top of it and everything let her let her break down. Um, like I said in the in the past, the inputs that I use, um, I, I really didn't have to add a whole a whole hell of a lot, you know, because the things that were being the, the most heavily used at those points week to week, you know, during a cycle, I was also inputting to make sure that like, you know, I'm giving it exactly what it wants when it needs it, you know, plant available and all. So okay. um, I never, I never really ran into any issues and kept some going for sure. It was like almost five years. So okay. um, yeah. So like it, it'll be a very minimal, very minimal effort, you know, on, on the other person's end as far as having to, to do any of that. But once again, I will, you know, take it, kick it up a notch and actually take soil samples. And I'm also thinking like with different cultivars and the same pots, you know, run to run, um, actually seeing like which ones, if anything changes in between, you know, um, you know, what yeah, I'm, what I'm running. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, 
the other thing I was going to ask you is about VPD. You mentioned um, what are you doing uh, as far as like nighttime VPD, and are you are you basing your VPD off leaf temperature or actual room temperature? Because I mean, I, I when I read about it, people kind of vague about that, and um, I've always gone off leaf temperature personally. You're 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 right on, man. Because like you're going to be, I guess, close with yeah. you know room temperature. But if you're going like after VPD and all that, obviously like you're wanting it to excel. Yeah. So that you're you're correct, man. You would want to go off of actual canopy temperature, and you're you're you know like I said when we're setting our rooms up and hitting the light meter and everything and making sure we got a good even light spread, we don't have any like weird hot spots in the room. Getting everything like I said dialed, really dialed. Yeah. And like I used to have a FLIR gun, you know. For, mm -hmm. you know, taking temps and stuff and then uh, power plants and shit like that. I yeah. used to use that. Yeah. I got the same so, thing. All yeah. right. Uh, and when you were talking about, uh, oh shit, I just forgot what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> <Stunna>. <laughs> Comes with smoking weed. Well, let's show, let's show him what, because uh, this is a mutual friend, I think, of the the show. Um, I think, I think Marco might know him too, right? TJ? TJ. TJ oh yeah on Instagram he's but, like TJ creatures yeah so this is his work here let me oh yeah the homestead hash co homestead hash oh, it comes yeah. in this nice so I, yeah because this is <clears throat> it's a wood box that he hand makes every jar see now I like that that's cool that was real cool man. A, yeah damn right box and but uh, naturally, you know, I don't know. It says naturally farmed living soil on the sides. I don't know if you can see that. You can see the That's HS though. Cool. So TJ was like my mentor. He's he's really brought me up into natural farming and everything. And That's super cool, man. That's super cool. But I was oh, always man. into like dialing in environments because I was a salt grower for a long time and I didn't know any better. And um, yeah. a little buttery. But I was always interested in. Uh, how the salt guys i will give it to them that they some of them have environment dialed in and mm -hmm. um that that alone will take you a lot of way, long way because deficiency really will. and everything yeah. will just will come from just environment you think you're low on other things you start hammering that and now you got lockouts and it's yep. crazy but yeah they're um, chasing chasing that dragon basically you know and never coming to the answer yeah and going back to the VPD, that that five degrees or, or so in plant temp to room temp is is huge in VPD, especially when you're trying to like really hit numbers. And um, when you, when, I, I just switched to LEDs. Do you do anything? Have, do you grow with LEDs by chance? Uh, yeah, this is going to be my beginning right here, man. Um, oh, okay. I never, I never have previously. Oh, uh, with you. Uh, I got the room all fitted out with some S techs. I got the high bays. And then the two tents, I got the the halos. They're like the more traditional, you know, like the multi-bar deal. Um, okay. Yeah, so this would be it. But I, I've been taking notes, you know, from my friends and shit that have been doing it a while. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to supplement a little more uh, a little more magnesium than I normally would. Okay. And, um, I, you know, I've been running this room. Like, I went ahead and inoculated all my soil pots to just give the whole food web a little bit of a jump start before a plant ever lands in the pot and just been kind of looking at, you know, what my temperature is going to be looking like at least. I'll still have to play with humidity, but getting the okay. room like just right before the plants end up, you know, going into, into that room and, um, you know, checking temperature, um, basically off of my, off of my hand, um, yeah. you know, at different ranges with that, that led, Cause like you can definitely feel the, the intensity of it for sure, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you yeah, feel like yeah. you're running the room hotter than you would HPS? That's why. Um, I, mean. I would say that yeah, because like I'm definitely not running the cooling like I like I normally would have, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the air circulation, everything, it just I guess it just feels like really good, <laughs> you know, in there, and then. I guess that once you're under that light and that footprint, though, like you feel that temperature shoot up. Mm -hmm. So, like going back to what you were saying, like if you're looking to run, you know, really properly and really tuned in, you're gonna want that temp in the, within that footprint 
of where that canopy is going to be. So yeah, really, that like I said, be dialed. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's all I really have for you. I, I had a Marco question, but I forgot about that one too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, bro. Little, I'm, here, little. I, I'm excited, excited to run your, uh, your IMO three in this, uh, liquid IMO I'm going to do. Oh, well, nice. that's what I was going to ask you is, uh, how long do you think, uh, a maintenance solution would be shelf stable? I like to use that right away. Um, you know, use it fresh. Okay. OHN, FPJ and a brown rice vinegar. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It, you can keep it. Cause I use the same thing for like a SES as well. And I'll keep it in a bottle in the fridge. Okay. And it seems to fridge. keep okay, but you know, typically I'll just go ahead and mix it when I use it, but um, you know, it's kind of play by ear, but it works both ways in my opinion. Okay, yeah, because I was playing around with the fish tanks and stuff. I'm trying to make like a maintenance solution from that, but I don't know how shelf stable it'd be. But okay, so you, well, I will say this now in that form, I know the fish waste is very, you know, stays really stable in that, mm -hmm. you know, in a bottle. In a bottle okay. form because I do that, you know, I use my fish waste from my aquarium as well. Okay. And then there's also um fish brew, some of Layton's people. Yeah. Um they're fish, I use they're, fish stuff too. Yeah, I actually saw them up in um um Massachusetts and I and I bought a bottle from them because I wanted to, you know, support obviously and try it. And it's some really nice stuff, man. Mm -hmm. Um I didn't scope it, but I have scoped my own and I see life that stays in there for a while out of that aquarium water. So, um, the, my aquariums, I got the reef tank, it's the salt water tank. So I'm trying to incorporate that, but it's, I'm scared with the salt. So I'm like trying to dilute it and figure out ratios that I can like recommend to other people and all my friends and stuff. So see, I like that idea. If I had a salt water, I would, I was thinking the same thing. Use that diluted instead of mm -hmm. using your seawater. Like we'd go to the ocean and collect it. I'd exactly. use that aquarium seawater right there. Mm -hmm probably even cleaner than the, some of the oceans around where we live nowadays, you know? Yeah. And it's elevated in calcium and magnesium and um, trace minerals and all that other good stuff. So I, I don't see any, how it could do anything bad, but yeah. exactly. Just with moderation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like Lady Eating says, inside. don't be a moron. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so Duke, I'm going to ask you one more question because we're, we're just hitting the three hour mark here. Uh, and it's a very important one. Maybe the most important one is where do people find your genetics? Well, um, right now everything's sold out, but you can always look to uh, Seeds Here Now. That's always uh, one. Um, Rocky Mountain High 719 on Instagram. Um, he's got a site, I believe, now. Um, he's, he, he's always uh, he's a good friend, too, so... He'll always have it. Um, there may be one, well, two more added once the once the time comes, you know. But that that Discord for right now is about about the best place to to catch me, you know. Because like I, you know, keep people kind of entertained and shit. We got the free seed giveaway, but you know, also like throw up some old stuff on an auction and people like it. They enjoy that. I think it's like gambling type deal too there's a gambling channel on there as well where you can play uh, matter of fact uh brian you can play dice you can play russian <laughs> roulette there you go <laughs> hey, brian yeah, yeah, it's called, it's called the, it's hot called hand the and dice game baby yeah, yeah it's called the yard too like you, your currency is postage stamps and you can buy like keefy coffee cigarettes shank cell phone whatever shanks yeah that's, that's the first cool. thing i would buy <laughs> or, or, or you could buy you could buy toilet wine too hey uh i got a i got a kind of a weird question i see a lot of these cats so i'm gonna like i guess it's kind of like a good anthem maybe bringing it up hopefully this person understands so i see a lot of this kind of stuff can you see this or uh, ah, fuck. Uh, you, yeah, we're just getting a glare, Brian. <laughs> uh, so it, it's basically what I see is, uh, you know, sometimes there's maybe you know how to do this better than me. I can try to show the brand. Uh, but but I, you know, I wanted to ask Duke and I, and I want to ask you, Marco, because you know you're kind of finding your own identity sometimes. But 
some of these individuals more in the kind of, uh, you know, working for yourself market. <laughs> uh, they're, they're copying like other brands, which, which I kind of get. So it's like, you know, they have their little thing and this is the, how do you pronounce that again? It's tapatio melts, melts, right? But it's the tapatio like brand of that big name brand. So I kind of want to briefly talk about that before we, uh, before, oh, Peter's saying back it up a little bit. See. So that's kind of, I guess, my question to you boys is oh, if you're building up, up your brand. Up the camera. This just gets worse. I don't know. You say yeah. like if you got like dosy dos and you got looking like a more like runs, bag. gorilla glue, you know those those yeah. are more like commercial known. But yeah. there's so many of them in the underground, especially yeah. in California and stuff, Miami. There's just like all these different things that are like that. Uh, so if you're really trying to build a name for yourself with longevity in this game, thinking like, you know long term instead of short term. What are your thoughts on building a brand where the face of it or the, the logo that people are going to remember is a logo that technically you don't own? And then if it's a registered trademark, uh, you know, you I, from what you I fuck. understand, they can send you like cease and desist and come after you if you're actually, oh, you yeah. know, if your name's out there As, big enough. Uh, yeah, like Cat, man, like with the uh, Gorilla Glue and all that, they got hit. Remember Hitman Dougie with the, with the fucking little dab rigs, Starbucks dab rigs? Like he he got he got hit, um yeah for for real like yeah you can get hit and like even if it isn't registered like why the fuck you want to ride somebody else's wave like thank you you know what I mean like you be yourself enough, someone's gonna come yeah, yeah. and and what they yeah. do is the problem is if you build your little brand off that and then you're small and it's all no problem but when you get big and get that money. That's when they're gonna come mm -hmm. take that bag. So you're Hell building. Yeah. And if sand. this dude, you know, if this dude ever sees this or watches the show or anything, I'm only saying this because you have talent. Like this is awesome. So I don't, I can't see you if you're thinking long term. How are you gonna be able Why to do that? do that? Maybe change it up a little bit, or you know, ha have the same idea but have somebody draw it out, kind of like Marco and I did with the logo behind us, or you know, check yeah. out uh, Duke's new logo and uh, you know all his gear coming soon. I think taking yeah. time to kind of find whatever is your role is going to be worth it, man. And I, and I, you know, I'm just putting that, that out there for people that are, that are running that. Cause you know, I, there's a lot of individuals that, that like to do that where they're running some kind of like uh, yeah. wave. It's like, it's like, it's their own little wave and I get it and it's, you know, it's marketing and, but the potential but like at the there same is time, like everybody does that. You literally will blend into this big Correct. sea of the same shit. And at that point, like you're not doing yourself any favors, you know? So just like, you know, be yourself, like however you're vibing, man, like what, whatever you're about and shit, like delve into that, like sit back, think about it. And like I said, I'm, I'm not no fucking <laughs> artist either, but like I can come up with some ideas, you know what I mean? Like fucking, uh, like this, this shit here. Fucking that 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 fucking uh you know little logo right there, That's fucking great. um yeah oh yeah Virginia yeah, State the emblem <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah man but it started off with that it start yeah exactly fuck them that's what I was thinking but yeah. that skunk itself like um Mark Serlo he, he's like a famous uh, artist he used to do uh like posters and album covers from a bunch of bands out there a lot of jam bands and shit but you know i traded him a quarter pound of weed you know what i mean just to you know hook me up i had an idea but i can't draw for shit so got him got him hooked up you know i got another idea hit up my buddy brad you know and if you don't know any artists like shit there's plenty of us you know so um like, you know you can always get get referrals and shit and they, yeah, just put out put out what your idea is, you know. You don't have to be a picture, like I said, just words, a good artist to take that and bring it to life for you. And then, boom, you got your own your own image, your own marketing, you know, make your own waves, you know. Thank and then, you. Uh, have you know, something that others want to copy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you know. And if hey, you oh, are going to have... Gonna have no, I'm sorry. I, imitation, Two seconds. Imi if, imitation's a sincerest form of intellectual property theft. All right, I'm Boom. Gonna, boom. And if you if you want to take it to the next level, you want to reach out to somebody like Bobby or the the ones that Duke were talking about, where they're hand drawing this stuff, uh, because it's really going to make it where no one can copy what you're doing. So when they do see that logo, when they do see that brand, 
I can I can test for myself, uh, even just running Marco stuff when it's on the table with our stuff. When certain people that watch the show, when they watch by, walk by and they see that logo, uh, it, they know exactly what that is. Um, and again, that's you know kind of taking the time to get something dialed in so that there's nothing else. Uh, that Marco has out there that I think could be easily replicated or, or duplicated be pretty tough because this, the style that Bobby has as well, Marcos, I guess is the better way to say that it's pretty hard to get somebody to copy that style. Well, also uh, if you want to be a G about it and I did micros by Marco is trademarked with the government, you know, go yeah. file the paperwork. You can actually do that on um, uh, rocket. Um, you know those online, not Rocket, but um, GoDaddy and shit. E files. No, not GoDaddy, but like the legal ones, legal Zoom. Oh, legal Zoom, yeah. Yeah, legal Zoom. You can you can get your name trademarked, and it's not that much. It takes a little bit of time for it to finally do. And then what happens is, then you can have that protection. If someone ever tries to put my shit on the shelf and without my permission, then that's trademark. You know, I mean, you got mm-hmm. those little things you can do. Um, to kind of protect yourself for real man and, and what he said, just mentioned uh, that trademark is what all those companies have done for those individuals that are now doing the skittles the, you know the yeah TM. jolly ranchers but those it's individuals had a, had a Z on it yeah those are companies <laughs> and they have huge pockets <laughs> and they have lawyer lawyers plural so I just oh, don't yeah. think the risk is there when you're trying to hustle and even in the street game man if you start to get big enough people know and uh, you know yeah. to, to your homie i know i've never met him or anything uh but i i hope that you realize that that talent's going to get you somewhere if you just kind of believe yeah. in yourself i guess and come up with your own yeah. shit brand recognition man brand recognition yeah. and if you got something different like shit as as brian fucking we was at that dude grows thing i was like what two hours late getting it set up people had already walked around threw up that fucking uh that backdrop that flag that, you know yeah, threw that up the flag, flag, bro. Yeah, bro. And people are like, zoop. <laughs> yep, <laughs> came, came right over, man. But yeah, yeah, brand recognition. That's a that's a big part of marketing. And that has taken you a long time to build. And so I think that's the other thing is people, maybe sometimes even the younger, younger style generation, they think that it comes quick and quick is like a year to them. I think if you're really trying to build a brand, that's a three to five year move. Um, if you're starting yeah. from scratch and, uh, and the you know, skills again, and man, the talent, you know, that's, that's the yeah, hard you got to carry yourself, the, you Canadian know, the marketing Jesus. and the rest. Yeah. Hell yeah. There it is. Yeah. Make yeah. it rain, make it rain. But Get yeah, man, that's seeds, the thing. Boy. <laughs> oh, hey, dude, yeah. while I got you, one of my homies on IG says, um, ask him which one of your, which strains has the puck in it? He's trying to get some of your stuff around him. There is, well, he's going to have a hard time finding <laughs> stuff right now. Um, anything that had that um, Dominion Dominion skunk in it. The Dominion had skunk. The, yeah, it had the skelly skunk um, it, within that to make that male. Um, directly, there was one called Stash Plant, which was Screaming Eagle to the, to the pup. Okay, nice. Yeah. And then he did say, why don't you release more of your stuff? But we already kind of know it's about that quality and it takes you know, time. Yeah, time. yeah, just yeah, it takes time, you know. Okay. So it uh, like um for my own uh solo adventure stuff, you know, like it uh, it's going to be after New Year's for for sure. Sure. I could probably see you bouncing around, hitting some other breeders and doing some collabs. Are you thinking about that kind of oh, stuff? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I got a lot of them that are like friends and like we've already been been done, did it. All I had to do was get out the halfway house. But um, yeah, yeah, that was already in motion. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. All right. <laughs> yeah. Good things take time. And uh, when yeah. you do release them, you know, that'll be worth it. Everybody will realize that, you know, they took the time to watch the show. Now, if they've never heard of you before, you know, now you, you realize what it really takes to create solid genetics for the community. And now, now you also kind of know that internal clock that maybe Duke was kind of hopefully uh, you guys picked up on that. Or if, every, if somebody is pumping out this stuff constantly, like how is that being achieved? Uh, mm-hmm. 
even ethically, yeah. how is that being achieved? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, and not a picture or review in sight. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they don't want you to know. They just want you to buy. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Cash and carry. See you later. Thirty feet or thirty seconds, isn't that the term? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> Ken, did we have any more questions? I know we pretty much covered everything, and and uh, I had a couple, but I deleted them because we're already fifteen minutes overtime. Well, we appreciate that, Duke. We, you know, we always value your time, buddy. Uh, thank you for oh, coming yeah. on and, and doing this kind of stuff. And you yeah, know, it's always again, good that's fun. why I'm glad Ryan could be here with me. You know, there's just a, a whole generation that is yeah. skill set is just it's awe inspiring, man. To be able to grow and wash. And have it look the way that it does, and to be able to chop it up with people like TJ, where he's mentoring you. I mean, that's um, you know, I don't even know if you could buy that. You know, like sometimes learning skill sets from individuals is and they're and taking their time up. You know, you can't buy that from them. So just shout out to everybody that not only is doing it, you know, as a as a medicine in an artistic manner, but is also taking the time to kind of mentor and, and take on to the new generation of. Hey, here are some nuances. And Duke, I, I know that you, you know you've always kind of carried the torch for everybody in that by revealing the stuff, uh, you know, at the beginning, man. So thank you for that. And um, hopefully, then in time, Ryan will uh, continue this. And I don't know, 15, 20 years from now, he's talking about stuff. Uh, that's what that's what we'd love to see. And uh, yeah. I think because of the uh, yeah. boom Bring of me all some of hash this. when I'm in the old folks' home. Thank right. you. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about some shit we never seen before. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, and a beautiful dog, dude. Oh, beautiful oh, dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she been bugging the piss out of me. I had to toss her up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Thank you. Appreciate you, Duke. Duke, this was a great show. Thank you, uh, yeah, uh, Ryan. You know, for for swinging you, through, man, man and blessing yeah, man. brother Brian with some dabs over there. Yeah, oh, man, keeping me quiet. Yeah, even the yeah, dog saying, hey. yeah, "Exactly, eh." <laughs> Yeah, man. So definitely, bro. We'll meet. We'll, we'll meet one day, one of these days in person, and chop it up real good. Oh yeah. yeah. All right, so Marco, yeah. do you have anything coming up uh, this uh, the next week or something? I got Saturday. I'm at um, Homegrown RVA uh, Richmond. Uh, Big Worm and myself linking up again, doing a little combo cool. uh, education deal. A little session combined at the end of it to hang out. So I hope everybody comes out, packs it in. And uh, it's a free event. I mean, free. But I'll have a few inputs and things if anybody wants to uh, add that to your garden. Come check us out. Nice. Definitely. Uh, Duke, do you got anything educational or anything new releases that you want to tease us with, brother? Educational. Uh, never whittle toward yourself or piss against the wind. <laughs> and, and don't eat yellow snow. Yeah, don't ever eat the yellow snow, man. Yeah, man. Or a sec or second hand sandwiches for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Never a good time. Uh, uh, Brian, I know you've got something coming up, brother. So uh maybe we want to mention uh that a particular young lady again. Oh yeah. Um so yeah, I probably even need to reach out to Duke with this and and all the breeders. Uh, I have now, uh, you know, a, f- a few weeks to really ha- take this and then behind the scenes. Uh, this was someone, if you see, that's her uh, baby girl. Uh, the same time that, um, you know, my daughter was born. Uh, unfortunately, there was complications with that. Uh, severe complications, you know, being in the hospital and in an uh, induced coma. Um, and so to really talk about the details, uh, I've reached out to uh, a, a few girls that are going to be on the show, uh, Jess and Katie. Um, uh, I know I'm forgetting a few of them. Um, they're all going to be on the show kind of talking about this. And we want to, um, you know, auction off seeds. Uh, Duke, we did this for you, buddy, when you were uh, at Penn State, buddy, you know, studying, studying well. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. Um, and so this is the second time that I've, I've done it. Um, and I hope that the community sees that the, the first time I did it is so to help, uh, you know, somebody that I thought definitely needed it in the fucked up situation. So again, I think this is somebody else that is in need and then in a fucked up situation. So, uh, yeah, if you can reach out to my wife, Tasa 303, myself, Marco, um, you know, just individuals that are part of the show, Ken, 
if you you know if you know these individuals better where we can start to get the seeds or people will pledge to actually ship them and that kind of stuff i want everything to be on the up and up integrity is paramount with this so if you pledge seeds please ship them you know people are going to pay the money with that and then the seeds need to get there in a timely manner so uh, I, i'm going to talk about that again i'm going to you know make some flyers for this but yes we would really like um, just help from the community itself if you don't have seeds or anything, then we're just asking for like five bucks. You know, I, I think most people could could afford that. And that's a fair ask for the amount of uh, people that would that we see and, and hopefully influence with this platform. Uh, so, again, this is for someone that is in need. Um, this is uh, something that I, I chose to do. Like she didn't reach out to me. So I want you guys to know that. And uh, same thing with Duke. Like I just wanted to do it because it was somebody in the community that needed it. And uh, here we are again. You and what date is that going to be, Brian? September 1st. So we're going to get on the hype train here uh, real shortly. Um, and hopefully I can get a, a few of the ladies to maybe pop on and kind of talk about that. And, you know, as it's kind of a, I don't, I don't know the right way to say that, like a teaser, but a trailer, you know, like of, of why it's important. Because it's just yeah. really sad, man, when you're, she should have been and she's in recovery and everything and life is turning around. So that's great. But at that moment, too, she should have had like joy because I felt like that might have that was stolen. Um, and yeah. I can, you know, obviously in a in a unbelievable way relate to that because I think it was like a week or two away from when my daughter was born. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fantastic. And the first isn't that far away, brother. That's only a few days away. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you got to get that set up and moving. But yeah i wish i could help uh i know the wife is already committed to sending 50 bucks to that young lady so uh you can look forward to that uh, uh from us yeah we'll definitely drop something on that too just send me a info flyer whatever we'll post it and get it all popping yeah absolutely. just text me dude uh, already i'm looking at it right here Got yeah buddy i know and hey and that and that was the the real beauty of it is that you know we were able to last time just kind of talk about stuff so um, yeah, you know, the community yeah. comes through and um, I hope that you guys see that, you know, we only ask when we feel like it's really warranted. So, uh, And as I always say, remember, it's all about caring, sharing and community. That's what it's all about. All right. Yeah, this thing's grown. Uh, you know, I think Peter had uh, like 30,000 followers, uh, subscribers. So this thing is okay. doubled. I mean, he has built quite the platform, so it's really cool that, you know, we can even do these kind of things uh, and make an influence in someone's life. So oh, yeah. uh, hats off to all the behind the scenes stuff that it took to get here. And I think everybody knows, even Duke, you know, you got your, you know, in a weird way, you got a little upper hand, man, because you do have that brand recognition. You've earned that every step of the way. Uh, but to even get those views on YouTube, the algorithm and all that, I mean, that's a bitch to, to grow a brand yeah, new channel, yeah. so. Yeah, hats yeah, off man. to everybody that's putting in the work trying to create content that uh people actually uh want to listen to yeah yeah, yeah definitely and, and there's lots of voices out there like listen to marco i, I love listening to marco because he's so knowledgeable about everything that he talks about and that's that's the person you need to reach out to on that topic just like duke is somebody you would reach out to if you want to talk about breeding but you got them listen to many voices to get everything right. Many voices. That's right. Yeah. yeah I would check out that discord too. You know, I mean, there's yeah. in a weird way, cannabis is allows you to kind of pick the brain of some of the brightest minded individuals, where if you think about that in different industries, those brightest, the brightest in that industry aren't going to make time for you. You know, I mean, if you're talking like big tech or big ag even, or just, you know, thinking of the big individuals, um, you know, where the cannabis, because Instagram is the only place where it's at, you know, people answer the DMs, it seems like a little bit more. So uh, the fact that you have that discord, uh, Duke, yeah. you know, is, is got to be a treasure for the community. So if you're, it if is, you're brand man. new to this and you're not checking out those kind of things, I mean, what is back in the day, like you had, like you had to be fucking MacGyver. Like you had to know yeah. how to do so much shit. Like, you know, because you couldn't call up the HVAC guy. You can't call up the electrician. You know, you can't get the plumber. Like, you had to know how to do this shit. And basically, like, all these old cats are just hanging around on there. And it's like, you just, just it's like you got an open book of all these MacGyver motherfuckers that are really good at what they do. 
and more than happy to like share that knowledge with you you know so, grows in trees did they say underground grows oh yeah the macgyvers oh yeah absolutely man i grow a plant with some bubble gum and a and a paper clip <laughs> okay guys well i gotta go oh, so yeah. i'm gonna have to end the broadcast guys so uh love you all, yeah, all gotta gotta go. anything else to say no i uh, just appreciate it please hit that like button that's all we ask you know i mean that's i don't think that's too much to ask either and uh duke they hit it there was like 170 it. something likes out of 180 viewing so they actually hit the likes oh, yeah. on this awesome one. yeah yeah, yeah. Right. Live, live that's long what matters on the ground yeah, and at one time we were up yeah. over uh, 250, I think it was uh, the top number that we hit today for live stream. Oh, nice. But that's awesome, okay. man, because this is uh, it's pretty tough for people to attend this that work like 9 to 5. So awesome. Yeah, daytime. Anyway, I'm hitting the end broadcast. So, Marco, if you want to start shouting out names, uh, we'll go out that way, brother. 